Uh, okay, good morning. Shabbat Shalom to you all. This is Rabbi Simon Altaf. Uh, can everybody hear me, please? Okay, good, great. Uh, right, so I think we still got more people to come in the room. It's a little bit early. Uh, it's about 15 minutes to go, but we'll kick start it. Because uh, I have lots of things to discuss, and uh, I guess they're going to have to catch up later with uh, the recorded lectures. So we'll, we'll kick start it, and... Uh, I like to give you the joke first. The awesome tribes of Israel. It's very important. You're going to learn some very important lessons today that you can apply in your lives, and uh, you're going to have a th- you're going to have a, a revelation and a half today. A devout a, de- a devout old shepherd lost his favorite Bible while he was out looking for a wayward lamb, and then three weeks later, a sheep walked up to him carrying the Bible in his mouth. The shepherd couldn't believe his eyes. He took the precious book out of the sheep's mouth, raised his eyes heavenward and exclaimed, It's a miracle. Not really, said the sheep. Your name is written inside the cover. So that is today's joke for the week. Now, our Pasha today is Tazriya. Pasha Tazriya. And uh, we'll come back to that, but as you know this week, we are already uh, celebrating the festival of Passover. Uh, our Passover began April 3rd, as it does every year on the solar calendar. And I want to bring some, some important things to your knowledge, which you can find very fascinating. And, you know, a lot of the time people are lied to, people are given false information. And then a lot of the times people don't know what is what is truth and what is false. They don't know how to discern it. And so a lot of the times what happens is that they are trying to discern, but it's difficult for them because everybody doesn't have all the history in their fingertips and they don't have it all memorized. And so, you know, it's very difficult to know until I, I guess at an appointed time, God brings you to a point where he opens these things up. It is no coincidence that we at Forever Israel have all, you know, have been teaching the solar Sabbath, the solar day, the start of the day at sunrise for many, many years now. It's not coincidence. But yesterday, I was fortunate enough to actually get proof. And listen to this. I was actually able to get proof from the Chinese that we are connected to the sun and not to the moon. It's very, very interesting because I was watching a program <coughs> and in that program what I saw was remarkable that the Chinese have a system of medicine in which they basically said we are the only people on this planet and I believe that is true. They are the only people on this planet who had this system and they said through this system using acupuncture and as you know I've studied acupuncture and I'm actually a prep. I'm actually a physician in acupuncture and herbal medicine as well, but I, I don't I don't run a clinic as such, but I do treat you know family, friends, and students. So having said that, uh, what he's what he said was that that this human body, the human body is connected to the sun, is aligned with the sun at a certain degree and at a certain angle, and he said when the human body misses that alignment with the sun it goes out of alignment, disease enters the body. And then what the first thing he said we do, the first thing that we have to do is bring the body back into solar alignment. Without the solar alignment, no human being can function. You cannot be in balance. Note that when I was teaching you the seven chakras, the first chakra, the first energy center, where the the energy from the heavens enters is the called the crown chakra or the energy center the top of your head think about it for a second now what's happening without the sun we will not have no power in this you know in this in this earth in this planet we will have no no seeds growing we will probably die in seconds because if the sun was to blow up today, for whatever reason, it malfunctioned, it blew up, we will all be dead in minutes and hours. This planet will be waste. 
So when people come to you and say to you, hey, you know, keep the lunar Sabbath, and lunar Sabbath was away, and let's do the festivals on the lunar Sabbath, you should know that that is all false. There is no scripture that says Sabbaths are on the lunar cycles. James is, is saying that I would like to give esteem to Yahweh for my health and letting me see 50 years of life and for the family I have around me and for guiding me to Hakohen so he may teach me the true ways to live. To da Hakohen. To da for that, uh, James. So, as I was saying, now you imagine this little theory that the Chinese came up with. Okay? The Chinese do this. First, they have to align the body with special acupuncture points. So, they were dealing with cancer, not, you know, not ordinary diseases, tough diseases. And they were talking about how they deal with cancer. And listen to this, this is just, guess, brilliant. And they said this, and I think there's a link somewhere, uh, Rabbi Kifa probably has it, I have the link as well. Somebody wants that link, I can send it to you, you can, you can look it up yourself as well. I can send you the link for that movie, it's about an hour and a half. And what this guy said was this, he goes, this doctrine in Taiwan, he said, I went to Russia. Russia is the only country in the world to have a machine, listen to the name, it's called a Metatron. Isn't Metatron name, one of the names of God? In the book of Genesis? Yes, it is. Yes, it is, awesome tribes of Israel. So this man goes to Russia, he picks up a small unit, only available in Russia, called Metatron. He brings it back to Taiwan, he uses that machine to gauge the body's energy flow. And then he can tell you, by just using that machine, how healthy your body is, or how deteriorated your body is, based on the energy. What I told you, a few weeks ago, on the chakra system, is actually doing what they do with machines. I did it with you through breathing. So what I taught you is a remarkable system that is going to change your lives forever. In other words, if you didn't have the money to buy the machine and couldn't tell your diagnosis, you don't need to. Because what you need to have is a system to, to bring your body into alignment with the sun. And when you bring the body into alignment with the sun, you are then able to have a healthy and whole body. So this is what this doctor, the Taiwanese doctor was saying, that we bring this machine back to, China, uh, back to Taiwan and we use this machine to gauge a person's, whether the person, person is sick, whether they are healthy or in, in between. And he said normally, and this is true in Chinese medicine called TCM, traditional Chinese medicine, which I understand completely. By the way, I'm an expert in it. it. You have to use your pulse, a human's pulse. I can check your pulse and I can tell you which of your organs in your body is not working correctly up to par and I can tell you which why you're unbalanced and whether you need to in, in order to get balanced what you need to do I can tell you that by just measuring your two pulses and so what they were doing but the pulse measurement is only for me in other words what I tell you will be based on my expertise but you don't know that that you know what the diagnosis I'm giving you is accurate or not but you will know it's accurate when I pinpoint the symptoms you'll be getting as a result of your organs being out of balance. But what the, the Chinese doctor who's been practicing medicine for over 30 years, what, he's, what, he's, what he said was that with the machine, the patients can see the energy that is being dissipated and disconnect that has happened with the sun. So he said, next what we do, we use, they use a special machine uh, like a lying pad and the patient lies over there and they're on this light frequency. They, they basically shine different lights onto the person's body, the frequency. That frequency then makes the human being adjust his balance and bring it into solar alignment. Now think about it for a second. Solar alignment. If we don't have the sun, we cannot survive this in this planet. And the moon also shines through the sun. So one thing we need to get is that there is no such thing as a sunset day. Never was, it never will be. Of course, you know, the, the, the Jews today have taken it from the, uh, our people from the first century that 
they had taken it from the Greeks. The Greeks were the one who gave us the sun, sunset day. Not, uh, not Moses, by the way. Moses didn't give us that day. Hence why the temple priest never, never, ever in history actually ever did a sunset day. You could go check that as well. It's in all of our books. All of our books are there, say that. So, having said that, it's very important to understand where we are on the threshold of history. And I wanted to tell you, they spoke about a woman, a woman that this doctor diagnosed. And uh, this woman had two breast mastectomies. She had breast cancer. And she went to the traditional Western medicine. And Western medicine, of course, said, you know, amputate, you know, remove her breasts. And so they did. So this woman lost both breasts, but her problems had not gone away. Because you can remove the you know, the, the, the temporary system, uh, symptoms, but they didn't cure her of her actual disease, what was ravaging her body. When she, when she was told by this doctor's father-in-law, and this woman was no just ordinary woman, she was a principal in a school, and the father-in-law was on the board of the principals, and he said to the woman, he said, go to my son-in-law, he's a great doctor, he will help you. So she goes to him, and he, he checks it out. And you know what he tells her? Listen to this. He tells us that the reason for your breast cancer was parasites and emotional problems. Yes, she had parasites in her body. And he checked her and he told her that the parasites have been there for years. They are not new. And he also confirmed that because of her emotional problems, the woman herself confirmed, because of the emotional problems, she had to divorce her husband. She was always arguing, always fighting with her husband, eventually ended in divorce. So, what does it teach us? It teaches us two things. Number one, a lot of the diseases can come from emotional problems. Number two, that a eating of, un, un, eating of foods, let me just put it very plainly, eating of foods that are not described in Leviticus 11 to be eatable, or that are described in Leviticus 11 to be non-eatable, that includes pork, can bring you all sorts of problems. Now, of course, Chinese people love their pork, and Chinese people love their seafood. So, part of the problem could be that she acquired these parasites either from pork or from seafood, one source or the other. And more, I, I would say more likely it was the pork where the, where the parasites came from. These were like worms that she had. So the first thing the Chinese doctor had to do, because they were using combination of Western and Chinese medicine, they had to bring her body into balance, they had to remove the parasites through herbal medicines, and they, once they did that, then the woman went on the course, and slowly and surely, the woman was completely healed. Then they did the woman's uh, x-ray with this machine called the Metatron, the energy machine, and the doctor was able to show the woman that her body is now clean, parasites gone, body healthy. And the woman herself confirmed, I feel so great now. She was probably in her 50s. She said, I feel great now. And I used to feel so bad. I used to have all these problems. I used to get angry very quickly. I used to fight with my husband all the time. So, some of you people in the US and other countries that are not in China, I can tell you this, or in Taiwan, some of you suffer from illnesses, and I can guarantee you this, that your illness has a cure. If not in the Western Hemisphere of America, it has a cure in Taiwan, in Japan, in China, in, you know, Philippines, India, in one of these countries, you have a cure. Because all these countries operate on similar principles. India, Pakistan, all of these countries operate in the East on similar principles of of a, of a di diagnosis and disease. So, I would encourage you to, to check this out. And some of you who are struggling with illnesses, uh, I mean, write to me in, to my email, that's shimon63, S-H-I-M-O-U-N-6-3, at yahoo.com. And, I will, and if, I, if I still have the link, today I have it, but I may not have it in two weeks' time, so I can then send you the link to this, to, this, to this series. There's about seven films they've made. I've only got, so far I've only seen two. There's about five more to come. And they're releasing them one day at a time since two days ago. 
So today I'm supposed to see the third one, which they're going to make in Philippines. So they've done the first series. That was done in uh, Japan. Amazing, amazing film. Amazing footage. Second one was done in, in Taiwan. So I, you know, I can send you the link to the second one, and from there you probably could backtrack and, and go to the first. They, have, they are producing, they have already produced seven DVDs. And they want people to buy these DVDs for their families, and they tell you what medicine does what. I mean, they don't go into extreme details, but they kind of at least point you the way to say, well, if you, you know, were, were, were using such and such medication, then, you know, it has such and such effect. In other words, one of the things, well, I can tell you one of the things that uh, I, I guess I, uh, you know, uh, you will have to, you'll have to uh, send me an email and I can send you a link to that video, Yael. And uh, one of the things that I can tell you that I knew for a long time is bamboo shoots. Bamboo shoots are very, very good for you as a powder. They're very good for you, uh, for, your in, for your colon, for your intestines, for your blood, for your organs, liver, heart. You know, they are very good for you. Kidneys. So, one of these things that you should take is bamboo shoot. Very hard to get, by the way, in this country. I think that you're going to have to go online and, and buy it somewhere, but I, it's very hard to find uh, bamboo shoot powder. But if you find it, you can purchase it. And bamboo shoot powder is extremely, extremely beneficial for you, for your, for your gut, for your uh, uh, sauna. Very, very good. And uh, one of the things that... Uh, you know, people who suffer from constipation, diarrhea, colon issues, rectal issues, you must take bamboo shoot powder. And you can get it from, I think there's a store in, in the U.S. online that, that sells it. Now, of course, it's, not, it's not, probably not the same bamboo shoot they make in China, but it's probably very similar to it. It's very close to it. So if you can get that, and that would be great for you to, 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 you know, to use it up and uh, use it for your, for your health benefits. That's great health benefits. Apparently, apparently activated charcoal, which people use to do colon cleanses, it is 40% better than active charcoal. And the Chinese people, they, they produce it pure in one of the mountains over there. And uh, in Taiwan, they were saying there was an area in which they produced it for themselves, and they said it's very pure. And they use it in the treatment of cancers, by the way. And for what they do is they, they use some flower essences. The flower essences are used to help people, you know, to balance their body with the sun. Then after that, they then use the uh, pellets from the, what they call the bamboo shoot pellets or the powder form. And they use that to bring all the toxins out of your colon and then excrete it out into the, of course, into the, flush it out so that your bodies are clean and healthy. And he also mentioned uh, coffee enema. He said coffee enema is very good. They're, they're subscribing to that. Uh, some of the doctors in Japan were talking about it. And they were talking about CBD. They, were, they didn't talk about it openly. The producer of the movie said that CBD oil is used to treat cancers as well. And a lot of patients have uh, uh, reported good uh, you know, good benefits from it. But he was saying that the doctors won't admit to it on TV because it's unlawful in their countries. Uh, cannabis is not lawful in their countries. So they cannot go on TV and say, hey, you know, take this for your illness. They're not allowed to do that. But apparently cannabis, which is today known in the U.S. as CBD oil, and you, know, you can acquire it legally because it's legal in many states in the U.S., and uh, it has many, many health benefits. So, it's something to think about, you know. We basically had, we, we, we dealt with CBD a long time ago. So, having said that, now I've found this, uh, this whole series, I mean, only seen two movies yet. I found the whole series very, very fascinating to how they were dealing with the, uh, with the therapies, with the diagnosis disease and the health thereafter. And I think it's very important because very important for us to have good health which will produce good lives. Because, you know, if you're unhealthy, if you're ill, then of course you're always miserable and you're struggling. So the tools that I've given you to teach you, the health tools, 
they will help you immensely if you follow those tools because they will improve your health in multitude of ways but you must be due diligent to follow them daily you know you can't do this oh, I'll do it one day and then three you know two weeks later you're doing it the second time you've got to do it more regularly to bring in optimum health into your lives so <clears throat> i thought that was very interesting to to at least know now the the pasha is um of course tazria and before i go into the pasha i wanted to speak about the about the widows widows fund uh the widows fund by the way is uh, we haven't quite reached the 2700 marker and i want to report a couple of things i've only reached about 1095 dollars i'm about 1600 something short so please you know the widow is a, a person in in the east which i've kind of taken upon myself to help i'm still about 1600 dollars short please you know send in your help to rabbi kifa or to the san antonio base or uh, i suggest that you can send the money in to me directly through paypal on our website forever-israel.com there's a button on the right hand side and you can do that and uh, i'll be able to you know use that, that monies to help this particular uh, pay in a particular woman the the sad part to report was this that she was pregnant and of course she needed about $300 for the hospital and it cost her just a little under that $300 she actually lost her baby so she had a miscarriage and uh, th- therefore uh, therefore uh, sadly i have to report that uh, you know i wasn't able to to you know i couldn't do nothing really for her baby because she just had a miscarriage and uh, and that's the the latest news i had over there however we're still working on the other other things so we still need to do the rest and uh she's she's uh, she's not in a good state right now she's obviously going through trauma because she lost a baby and she's still recovering so that's that part and uh having said that so tazria uh tazria which uh, chapter 12 of uh the book of vaikra leviticus it says and yahweh spoke to moshe moses saying speak to the children of israel saying if a woman be conceived and give birth to a child then shall she be unclean 7 days according to the days of separation of her of her infirmity shall she be unclean and in the 8th day the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised and he shall then continue in the blood of her purifying 33 days she shall touch no holy thing nor come into the sanctuary until the days of the purifying be fulfilled but if she bears a female child then shall she be unclean for 2 weeks in other words the the woman when she gives birth to a male child she is unclean for a certain period of time and then when she gives birth to a a a, a girl then she is unclean for a certain period of time that is what the torah states uh, and then she should refrain from of course uh, cohabiting with her husband during that those times and of course she is going to have uh, she's going to have healing uh, so before she receives healing she's going to you know go to have plenty of rest and the bleeding has to stop etc a lot of that you know a lot of this chapter is to related to that but i'm not going to go so much into that but i will discuss something else which i thought was very pertinent of course you know with this woman she's obviously we don't i don't know whether her child was male or female but clearly you know whatever the child was it wasn't born and so she is going through the necessaries at the event of the after the event of the child not being born now uh i wanted to discuss something which i think is very pertinent and it is something called karma and the bible actually speaks about karma as well indians call it karma and uh you know maybe the westerns also call it karma because the term comes from india and uh i don't know what the other people call it but it is actually in the bible as well the karma is in the bible by the way and uh you may wonder what is karma well karma is is exactly what the messiah yeshua jesus of nazareth spoke about as well when he said that do unto others as you will have them do unto you that is karma and uh, what you sow 
is what you reap is the scripture tells us what you sow is what you reap therefore that is karma as well and I wanted to take you to some, some stories that I think you'll find fascinating and I wanted to take you to a particular character in the Bible who had karma visit him and is very pronounced can anybody tell me a character in the Bible who had karma visit him very pronounced and is spoken about in Christian circles pr- pr- practically all the time they always reference him exactly Olivia thank you for that Job <laughs> Job had karma visit him and Christians love to talk about him Job by the way wasn't a particularly uh, he wasn't a particularly uh, righteous man you know people love in the church people love Job but Job wasn't a particularly righteous man he wasn't a right man he actually made some very bad things in the past that Christianity doesn't know and doesn't even teach you and do you know what those things were what did Job do in the past that his home was visited by karma anybody here wish to hazard a guess okay we'll wait for the people to answer he advises Pharaoh yes he advises Pharaoh what did he advise Pharaoh okay Abrahu says kill the firstborn okay Abrahu thank you for that so he was an advisor to the Pharaoh at one time in history and his advice wasn't just to his advice was this that the children of Israel the Pharaoh feared that the children of Israel were propagating very fast in other words we had plural marriages you know our people our folks had seven wives eight wives ten wives twelve wives etc so they were producing many children many many children and when they were producing many many children Pharaoh was so afraid he was like what happens when these people become a mighty nation they might join with our enemies and destroy us so he feared he started to fear the Hebrews and then what happened Job comes along as an advisor to Pharaoh and Pharaoh brings in about four advisors Job was one of them and he asks him what should we do with these Hebrews because I, I fear that one day they'll be our enemies and so Job's advice was to tell the tell the midwives to kill the firstborn male child at the source of birth and you know not not that child not let that child survive and uh, apart apart from that he said do this forever okay so that was your job the so called righteous man in the bible and uh, now job was visited by satan of course ha satan satan is an angel and uh, the angel happened to visit job question is why why did the angel visit job and i want you to point you out to a particular scripture that that job said job said in the book of job and it was i believe in chapter 3 verse 25 he says the thing which i greatly feared is come upon me which i was afraid of is come on to me what thing did he fear remember we spoke about what you attract what you constantly think about is that which you attract so job clearly had a fear from the past let me tell you what that fear was today that fear that was you know not quite spelt out was a very fear that the act he had done to the hebrews he at one point had uh, allowed through his advice children of israel to be murdered guess what's going to happen he had allowed the children to be killed he knew that and you can go apologizing and you can go giving sacrifices but your karma unless you unless you reset unless you reset your source your sin or i shouldn't use the word sin because it's the wrong word unless you reset and bring yourself into covenant fidelity you will be visited by karma irrespective of how righteous you think you are so job was visited by karma what was karma for job well he had killed many people's sons guess what happened to his house his whole family 
his all his children were killed by the events that took place in Job's life. You see, Christians like to then go bemoan about, hey, poor Job, you know, how sad it was that he was, you know, lost his children. Job deserved it. Job's karma was going to come to him because of his own evil deeds. Irrespective of how many sacrifices he put down, karma can only be stopped in one particular way. And I'm not going to discuss that way over here. But enough to say that he had paid the penalty after his children had, had died. Because if he goes and lays a sacrifice, let's say, there was no temple in Job's time by the way, so he couldn't have laid a sacrifice anyway. But let's just say that there was a temple and he was able to lay a sacrifice for his murders that he committed in his you know, previous days with the Pharaoh. How will he ever be able to pay for the sins of so many dead children that he had killed? Do you think, let's, let's bring it forward into our timeline, do you think that Hitler killed many people? He had many people killed, Jews, Polish people, black people, Christian people, he had all sorts of people assassin you know, assassinated through gas chambers. Do you think if Hitler brought a sacrifice into the temple that he would be you know, redeemed? If you, if you think the answer is yes, you're actually very wrong. The answer is no. He will never be redeemed. Such a person cannot be redeemed because his sins outweigh what he has done. He can, yeah, he, can tempor he can temporarily believe that he is redeemed, but he will not be because... The, 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 the crime is such that it cannot be repudiated. When you kill millions of people, that crime cannot be repudiated by any measure of forgiveness. Yes, you know, the victims might decide that they forgive the person. They can decide on that. But from God's side, it's not possible. Because there are certain sins that God will not repudiate. And by the way, murder is one of those sins. Yes, because Adidia, the reason why he is considered as a servant to Yahweh, because he had, he had given advice to Pharaoh, and Pharaoh had enacted his advice, which then allowed the children of Israel to be killed. Because we know many children were killed at that time, and some survived. However, later, later he came to repentance, and he obviously repented for the sins that he had committed. Again, the sin, again, I don't like using the word because it's the wrong word. So he, later for his transgressions, he had repented. Obviously, the karma part had not been dealt with. So he could be considered right in Yahweh's sight in one way, but not right in another way. See, he had dealt with karma. Karma was going to visit him. Let me take you back to another story so you can actually understand what I'm saying. I'm not saying that Job was unrighteous at the point that the karma visited him. At that point, Job was in a right standing with God. But karma was still going to visit him. Why? Because he had not dealt with karma part. And he is not the only one, by the way, in the Bible who didn't deal with his karma. There are other people. Let me take you to another people, another person. Can you tell me another another person who's very famous in the Bible who also had karma visit him? And we'd like to hazard a guess for that person. He's one of your forefathers. David? No, it wasn't David. We'll come to David as well, probably. But he was before David's time. Wasn't King David? Okay, this person that we're talking about that had the issue with karma, not Saul, not Joseph, <laughs> here comes names, <laughs> none of those for now. The person that had to deal with karma was the right ruling, in standing, the great and the infamous. Think about it, well, I'm just going to say, no, not Moses, <laughs> not Moses, <laughs> it was Jacob. Jacob was the one who was visited with karma. And we are seeing that karma today, in 2019. I'm not even talking about the past. What did Jacob do wrong? Jacob basically pretended to be his brother, right? 
he went to his father upon his mother's instructions that he is Esau. He was an Esau, but he pretended to be Esau. He deceived his father. Karma visited Jacob in two ways. Let me illustrate the point. How did Karma visit Jacob? Jacob was in right ruling with God, right? He was always, in, from what we understand, right ruling with God, but he, he never reset his karma. Again, again, priesthood is key in this whole affair, that the priest should be able to guide you, as to correct you, as to how to go about dealing with those kind of issues. So, in Jacob's case, he was visited by karma twice. Number one, he was also deceived by his father-in-law, but be presented with the wrong wife. That was the first one. Right? Father-in-law was the first one. Can anybody tell me the second one? There was very two very prominent events in his life. One was father-in-law giving him the wrong wife. There is another one that we are living that today, by the way. All of us are living that today. And when you hear about it, you're going to be like shocked. And you say, my goodness, I didn't think about that one. The second one, by the way, awesome tribes of Israel, the second part of karma, we are in it today. You know what that part is? Just as, just as Jacob, just as Jacob deceived his father and said, I am your son Esau, what happened was that we, today, you and me and many of our brethren, many of our awesome tribe members in the east and the west and the north and the south, were also similarly deceived. Why? Because just as Jacob took the picture of another person and said, I am he, right? Guess what happened to us? Today, another people took the picture of Jacob's sons and they are living in Israel and saying, we are Jacob's sons. Yet they are not he. They are not Jacob's sons, but they are living like that. Guess who karma visited? Karma visited Jacob's children because of Jacob's wrong that he committed at that time. In other words, even though that was repudiated completely, it was done away with. It wasn't even counted to him as a sin or as a transgression. It wasn't counted. But the karma did visit Jacob. Doesn't matter how, how right ruling he was. It visited him. He wasn't able to reset it. Let me give you a little short story, and you probably will, this is a this is a real short story, by the way. This really happened as well. I visited one of my students, and one of my students he told me, he said that uh, I've basically uh, had a dream. One of his relatives came into his dream and spoke to him, and he you know he shared his dream with me, and I and he said to me, what do I need to do? And I said, what you need to do is you need to, part of that dream is an issue where, the, where this person, the grandfather had died. And I said, what you need to do is you need to do the rights of the firstborn son that he did not do. Now both, both people were dead. The father was dead and the firstborn was dead. So the son now, the grandson, I told, instructed the grandson, I said, you have to deal with your grandfather's uh, misbehavior. I won't even call it a sin. It's misbehavior because it's a covenant breach. He was in covenant breach. I said, even though he's dead, his soul is there and he's in yearning because he needs that to be resolved. You need to, you need to stand for him in your living body and you need to do that with me so he can be resolved. And he did do that, by the way. We enacted a redemption ceremony for his son that had already died and he never had that dream again. Think about it. If you don't reset the sin or the, I shouldn't use the word sin because it's kind of confusing. If you don't reset the misbehavior, the covenant breach, let me call it a covenant breach. If you don't reset the covenant breach, the karma will visit you. That is what needs to be done. This is why one of the key questions that nobody has answered today. Go ask a question to all these so-called great rabbis out there. Why do we have to do a redemption ceremony? None of them can answer that for you today. None of them have a clue about it. Why we do it. They will give you all sorts of you know, answers which are not even true. The reason why we do the redemption ceremony of a child who is sinless, 
listen to this, who is sinless, has committed no sin whatsoever, why then he needs to be redeemed? Why bring five silver coins for him? Or $125? Why? Because karma will visit him because of his father's ignorant sins or things that he's done and he though may have thought, I've, you know, I've done right with God, I've fixed them, but karma still stands in the way. If he doesn't deal with it through his son, then the karma will visit like a rainbow effect through the sun. It will be a rainbow effect. It will go on all the children. It will start with the firstborn, then all the sons underneath, and all the daughters. So when the father enacts a redemption ceremony, he boom, stops the karma right there. That's what happens. Did Job do that? No. Did Jacob do that? No, he didn't do that either. Hence why the karma is visited upon him. So, therefore, that needs to be done. Because at Jacob's time, there was no priesthood. Priesthood hadn't even started yet. But then, you know, when Jacob died, priesthood started afterwards. Because one of his sons became the priest. Le you know, we're talking about Levi here. So, from there, we, we, we go. And we start to do the things. So, I think that you will find it very, very interesting. That we're talking about this and karma. Because karma will visit you if you are not careful. Hence why we can start, you, ne next time you go and read a story, you read a book in the Bible, and you see what that character is, and what it says about that character, you will then be looking, is did karma visit him? Did karma visit him? So, let's start looking, did karma visit Joseph? Joseph, you know, in, in Egypt. Did karma visit him? Because we know that he, used to uh, go to his father and he used to make up stories about his brothers. Absolutely, Kama visited Joseph and Joseph was a right ruling man. Right? He was in right standing. Kama visited him. What about, what about uh, King David? Did Kama visit King David? The answer is yes. Even King David, who was in right standing with God, who had, uh, did the you know, sacrifices, everything he needed to do, and God said he's my friend. So, not my friend. God said David is in his own heart, whilst his friend was Abraham. So, he was visited by karma. Uh, what is karma? Karma is what you do unto others will visit your home soon. If you have done a wrong to somebody in your life, unless you, you fix that wrong, you will be visited by karma. Karma is K A R. M A, that is karma. It's called it's called what you sow, that you will that you will harvest. That's what karma is. So here we are dealing with karma and karmatic effect. So you you all need to examine your lives, all of you, and you need to ask yourself that question: Has my father done anything wrong? Did he do anything wrong against God? And if he did, how do I repudiate it? How do I stop the karma effect in my life? And you can stop it right there and then. But you have to think about it. So, for instance, if your father was a Sabbath breaker, and you, you, if you claim that you're an Israelite, and your father was an Israelite, of course, by definition, since you are one, then the father must be one. So, if your father was one, but if you knew that your father never kept a single Sabbath because the church told him not to, because he was a Christian, or maybe he was a Muslim, I don't know. Then, he has already breached the covenant. Because he breached the covenant, you have to now bring a what, what's called a shalom offering, or a, a restitution offering to the Kohen, equivalent of value, to repudiate that karma effect in your life that will definitely come down your life, it will happen to you and your children and it will continue the cycle until somebody, some smart guy comes along and says, Hey, like myself and says, you got to stop this karma effect. It's happening in your family. It's devastating your family. It could be a cancer. You know, it happens in every member of the family. It could be a, another disease. It happens in every member of the family. So, boom, you, you do your, you, you bring your uh, restitution offering before the Kohen in the gate and it stops. No more people get it after that. That's the karma effect.
So I thought uh, it'd, be, it'd be enlightening for me to bring it to your attention. Let's say that you are the one of the sons of your father. And you have other brothers and sisters, but you are the firstborn. But your father didn't even know what the heck redemption ceremony is because he was in a church and he was never taught that. So the father doesn't know what a redemption ceremony is. Father never did it. Now you are the son, maybe you are 50, 60 years old, 70 years old, and you suddenly realize, hey, I was the firstborn. But my dad never took me to a priest, never took me to a rabbi or a kohen who performed a redemption rite. Well, guess what? You're going to have to do it for yourself. And if your father had a son and he died, and you are the brother, then you have to do it for your, for your, for your father still. Because otherwise, you haven't reset. You haven't reset karma. Karma will visit a, a, a theater near you very soon. Don't ever doubt karma. I don't care how right standing you are in God. Unless you deal with the redemption, unless you deal with it, you will pay for it. Believe me, you'll pay for it manifold. And your, your family members will pay for it. And they'll continue to pay for it. And then you'll be wondering, why the heck is these things happening in my family? They, what, what wrong did they do? Well, they, maybe they did no wrong. Maybe one of the forefathers did a wrong. And it's coming down your families. And it's what we call the, the three generation effect. And we can stop it in every generation. We can reset it. Only if the people know. Only if they are wise enough to go to a Kohen and say, Hey, I'm getting this problem. I'm getting this problem in every generation of my family. And how do I deal with it? Then the priest can say, you know, he can ask you some questions and he can tell you that this is karma and this is what you need to do. Restitution. Without restitution, this will continue. So I thought it was, it was a bit of enlightening for this to come into your life and for this understanding to be brought forward. I thought it was very important. Some of you came in late and you missed the you missed the earlier talk about the Chinese medicine and uh, Taiwanese medicine and Japanese medicine. Uh, yes, you can, you miss here. You can, but are you the firstborn? Are you the firstborn of your father? Because you know, you if you're the firstborn, or if your brother was the firstborn, then we can deal with it. So, having said that then you have to deal with it, you may see, if you are the firstborn, because you have never done this. You, karma has visited you, and you don't even know about it. So, having said that, it's very important that, you know, like I was saying, I had that documentary link, and seven DVDs, they are selling for support with different medicines from the East that can help you in all sorts of disease, especially cancer. All cancers are curable, by the way. Let me repeat that again. All cancers are curable by Eastern medicine. So don't let the doctors tell you that you're going to die in three months. It doesn't happen like that. That's just the... Uh, or you're going to have to live on the, you know, their medication for the next 50 years. It doesn't happen like that either. So cancers are all curable. Now, moving on, let me come back to, the, to the, uh, our ladies part, which is, this is a ladies technical part here for the ladies. Uh, because, you know, it talks about the ladies, you know, when they're having uh, children. So it so says, but if she uh, goes and says, let me go through it. The male child will be circumcised, of course, on the eighth day. And it says that a woman will be unclean one week for a, for a, a son, and she will be unclean for two weeks for a girl. And then it goes on, and it says that when the days of, the purify, of her purifying are fulfilled for a son or for a daughter, she shall bring a lamb of the first year for a burnt offering and a young pigeon or a turtle dove for a, for a sin offering to the door of the tent of the appointed times to the Kohen priest. Now, let me just quickly, uh, while I'm looking at this particular Pasha, I think it might be pertinent that if I can... Uh, let me see... Because I wanted to bring in another part... Let me just go back to the book of Leviticus, chapters 12, and it then talks about continuing the blood and purifying is done. Uh, then she says that, uh, and she shall continue in the blood of purifying there three score and six days old. When the days of her purifying are fulfilled. For a sin offering. Now let me let me say one thing here. It says for a sin offering, khata. Now of course, 
uh, in the Hebrew the sin offering is described as a khata. Let me now first correct you, uh, a lot of you people, that this is not sin as Christian church teaches you. So remember, we've been going through these lectures for the last, I don't know, 12 weeks now or more, more than 12 weeks, maybe 16 weeks where I described that sin is not sin as you thought it was. Sin is missing the mark. So when you miss the mark, you don't get your desires and dreams. So what is actually happening over here where the word sin is used, unfortunately the word khata in the Hebrew Bible, uh, and I'm trying to think of the translations now of that word, what is the best translation. And there are not, there are not many best translations, but I think another, a good translation would be offense. Or uh, maybe restitution would be a good translation as well. But then, you know, people can say, hey, how does he have happened to translate khata as restitution? Because that's actually what's happening. It's not an offense as we understand it. And it's not a sin as we understand because it's not about a desire and wish. So, what is wrong? What is wrong with the woman who gave birth? Well, are you, are you saying that she committed a violation? I think yes. There you go. That's the word. Could we use the word violation instead of sin? Because is God saying that she gave birth and she was some, in some way, shape or form in violation of the Torah? Therefore, she has to bring a restitution offering to the priest in the gate. Now, of course, it suggests that, doesn't it? It suggests that. God doesn't spell it out. He just says that, you know, you're going to bring a burnt offering, a lamb of one years old for a burnt offering, and a young pigeon and a turtle dove for a sin offering, to the door of the tent of the appointed times to the Kohen in the gate who shall offer it before Yahweh and make atonement for her and shall be cleansed from the issue of blood. This is the instruction for her that has born a male or a female. Now today, many women give birth and do they do this? They don't do this at all. But they should because you're still supposed to do this today as well. If, you, if, you're, a, if you're part of Israel, part of the awesome tribes of Israel, and then, you know, you have given birth, you are supposed to bring equivalent offerings to the Kohen in the gate. And the equivalent offerings will be, as subscribed, if it's a male child, and it'll be, it'll be a lamb worth $200. If it's, a, uh, you know, if it's a female child, then it will be the other stuff. So, hence why, this atonement, what is this atonement? Atonement meaning, you know, it says, atonement means kapoor, Kapoor is to cover. So what God is saying that through this sacrifice or the, or the offering, the woman is being covered. Now what does he mean covered? So what does he mean to be covered? Well, uh, Rabbi Kiva probably knows. Uh, because now Rabbi Kiva's wife is, is, is as you know, she is going to have a baby this year. And uh, so Rabbi Kiefer's wife, you know, whether she has a male child or a female child, depending on the male child, has to be circumcised eighth day, and then has to the offering has to be brought to the Kohen. In other words, myself, Rabbi Kiefer will will know this, and then he has to bring an equivalent offering to the priest in the gate to rem to cover his wife. Well, did his wife commit a sin? Or when I use the word sin. I don't mean sin as in desires and, and needs. We're not talking about from that angle. I'm saying from an offense. Did his wife commit an offense before having the child? The answer is clearly no. She did not. So why then God would bring this restitution type of offering? The answer is very simple actually if you think about it. Because she, well, she gave birth to a, a male or a female child. A woman today giving birth to a male or female child and what's here insinuated in the text of our, our holy books is that, is that it says in verses, uh, chapter 12 of Leviticus, verses 6, and it says, and when, let me move that forward, looks like I've got the wrong type of font here, let me fix that, it should be Arial 12, that's great. So, it says, and when the days of her purifying are fulfilled for a son or for a daughter, she shall bring uh, bring a lamb the first year for a burnt offering and a young pigeon and a turtle dove. So, 
So to, let me calculate for you, for somebody who has a son, $200 for a lamb, and it'll be, uh, it'll be another $200 for the, for the birds. That's $400 offering to the Kohen in the gate. If it's a daughter, he says, he says the, the one standing before Yahweh, the Kohen will make atonement. In other words, covering for that woman, for that family, so she shall be cleansed from the issue of blood. This is the instruction for her that has born a male or a female, either. It doesn't matter which one you, you give birth to, you still have to bring the same. And it says that if she be not able to bring a lamb, if she was poor, then she should bring two turtle doves. Then you still have to pay about $200 instead of $400. Or two young pigeons, or maybe, you know, if a pigeon's value is around, let's say, let's say for pigeon's value, young pigeon's value is around $50, then you would bring $100 instead of $200. Either way, you pay something to the Kohen, he shall make atonement for her and she shall be clean. So, many of you women who have given birth, you need to think about this. Have you done this? And the answer is you probably haven't. You probably never even heard about this till today. So, you are all due, by the way. If you have begotten children, you are still due for this. So, just to, by the by, I thought I'd let you know. Because otherwise, what's the downside of this? Karma will visit you if you don't. I'm not trying to scare you. Heaven forbid... Please don't get this wrong. I'm not trying to scare you in any way. This is not some kind of Christian fad. I'm giving you Torah law that if you do not conform to the covenant, we have been given a covenant, or some tribes of Israel. You and me both know. We have been given a covenant by God. That covenant belongs to us only. It doesn't belong to the Gentiles. It belongs to us. So, you know, uh, Jane over there, down the street, if she's part of the Gentile clan, she is not asked to do this. But if you and me are part of the Israelite clan, we are asked to do this. So if you have begotten children, this is the father's responsibility, if he's around, if father's not around and the mother's, that they have to bring these offerings to the Kohen in the gate. Why? Because they are commanded by God. No rabbi on this planet. You go to any rabbi, and I've heard many rabbis, by the way, because I've been all over the place, in Israel many times and other countries. No rabbi can explain why we have to do this? You ask any rabbi, they say, we don't know. We don't know why God asked us this. Because clearly, both of us know practically that a woman has not committed an offense giving birth. So why bring this thing? The reason for that, let me tell you the reason for that, is very simple, as I explained earlier about Job. It's called karma. It is to prevent the children from inheriting karma from their parents. And I can tell you one people on this planet who know and who understand karma better than probably even Hebrews today is the Hindu people. They understand karma very well. Uh, Rabbi Kifa is saying many women today phone into us and ask why their children are having so many problems. Reset time. Absolutely, Rabbi Kifa. So the reason why your children are meeting difficulties in life, listen to this awesome tribes of Israel. The reason why your children are meeting so many difficulties in life, can't get a job, can't get ahead, having problems, it is karma. You, the parent, have to reset it. Or the child, if he acquires this understanding, if you're listening to this broadcast today, doesn't matter if it's 2019 today or 2021, if you're listening to this broadcast and you have been affected by your parents' karma because your father and son were ignorant and they were part of Israel, and they didn't know to do this, you have to do this for yourself. You have to bring a $400 equivalent, either up to $400 or $200 or $100 equivalent to the Kohen in the gate and repudiate what was commanded to the father and the mother. Because you may be the children now listening and you say, hey, I was born 40 years ago or 50 years ago. My mother didn't do this. My father didn't do this. But I'm part of Israel. Guess what? Karma has visited you. Now, in order to reset that karma, if you don't do it, and if you are ignorant, you know, you might say, I can't afford it. Well, God said, that if, even if you bring two pigeons, equivalent, that's $50, by the way, your, your, you know, you will be covered through the Kohen. So, something has to be done. And if you don't do it, you say, well, you know, I can't afford it, I'm not going to do it. Fine, don't do it. Karma will continue to visit your children. It will continue to ravage their lives and wreck their lives. Then you will be wondering, why is my son daughter getting this problem? Because you did not reset it. 
That's why. So this is why I just wanted to bring it to you to your attention. Is something that I I wasn't today. Believe me, I wasn't going to talk about this today about karma. I had no notes about karma in my notes. And just yesterday I had a conversation, and I decided that oh, I need to speak about karma because karma is happening to many many people, but we never speak about it. So I thought it's time to speak about karma today. As I've been teaching you many other therapies, I thought karma was one that was visiting you, and it creates blocks. It creates blocks, and it prevents successes in people's lives. So, so the the way to deal with this is remove those blocks, because this is why Job said. The thing that I feared the most that has visited me. What was that? Karma. It was a block. He had a block. Although he had money, but he had blocks, and that block and that fear told him that something he did wrong in the past. He hadn't completely dealt with it. May have dealt with it partially, but didn't completely deal with it. And it was yet to visit his family, and it did, and it destroyed his family. Then he had to go out and get a new family. So I, I need you to think about it carefully because. A lot of you are getting into divorces. You're losing your children. You're having to pay child support. Ask yourself the question: Is this a result of karma? And I think you may actually get you may actually come to the answer on this particular scenario. So, having said that, you know, chapter 13 then speaks about leprosy. So somebody wrote in to me asking me from South Africa about leprosy and how they deal with it. And I said. You know, there was a particular person, I guess, in their particular life that they were having trouble with, and they said, "Could you, in the light of, they said Christianity don't ever talk about it, but could you, in the light of uh, the, the 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 Torah law, as a Kohen, speak about Leviticus 13?" I said, "Well, are you trying to apply it to your wayward friend?" And of course, they were trying to apply it to their wayward friend, and I said, "Okay, then you know, we cannot strictly apply it, but this is how it's applied." So you know he wanted to apply Leviticus 13 to a situation and explain that it's not strictly applied, but you know in a in a theoretical way it could be applied, but uh, it needs to be done done in a particular way, etc. And so, but there's I told them there's a particular way to deal with that particular situation, and is is not as they thought it was. So I, I left it with that for them to you know get understanding in the matter to how to apply that situation because you could have a situation. But you have somebody in your life, you know, some friend or, or you know, maybe a family member, that uh, they are b- b- behaving really erratically with you. You know, they don't respect you, or they disrespect you, or they, or they say things, or they, you know, kind of like don't want to hear what you have to say. Then there are particular ways to deal with that situation. Uh, Abrahu is asking that uh, does the pidya haban take part in this? Or the sin offering given after reverting or converting. Okay, no pidya haben abrahu for the males. If you've been, you know, if you had uh, born children, pidya haben applies to the firstborn who was born through normal, non-invasive uh, ways. In other words, if you're a if you're a son, and you were born through C-section, then pidya haben doesn't apply to you even if you were the firstborn because it negates it. But if you were a, a son born through non-C-section, normal birth, then it applies to you. Then you have to deal with it. That's what resets it. So it's called the redemption ceremony. But the sin offering, or I should say the offenses offering that you give at converting or reverting is different. That doesn't reset anything. That's not to do with the reset of your karma. Resetting of the karma will only affect through the pidya haban for the male, which is because that's what God said is redemption. Redemption, you see, people have made a whole, whole deal out of redemption because they see redemption as some kind of airy, fairy, spiritual concept. Actually, redemption is to do with living, your life, your health on this planet. That's what it's to do with. So, if you don't do that, then your karma, which will visit you, uh, without you having to do that, because once you do that for your male son, firstborn son, then all children are covered. All your brothers and sisters are covered through that one person, because he's the head. Technically, after your father dies, who's the head? That elder brother. He's the head. So that's how th- how that works. Having said that, having said that, this is this is how it's supposed to be. So think about it, you know. Uh, and uh, if you feel that this is something that you need to do, and for women, if you you need to think about your children that you gave birth to. 
uh, if you if you haven't done what I described today, you're gonna have to uh, think about that. Come to me, ask me a question if you need to, and we can deal with it at that point. So, uh, other than that, I'm gonna just say for the people who came in late that the widow fund uh, right right now stands around the uh, around the 1,095 marker. We're about $1,605 short. So please, you know, do donate what you can and what what you're able to. So I can meet that particular need. I need about I need to to raise up to twenty seven hundred dollars. So I will uh, leave it at that, and uh, I'll, I'll make it nice and sweet and short. And I'll pass the the baton, the mic over to Rabbi Kifa. And any questions you have, my email address through our website at forever-israel.com. Those of you who want to donate, you can send it directly through PayPal and just mark it widow. Or you can send a check to Rabbi Kifa to his uh, uh, his San Antonio address that is on our website pages at the front page at the right at the bottom with his telephone number, and you can send it to his uh, his uh, Gentile name, which is Lamont Clofus, Rabbi Lamont Clofus, and then he can deal with it at his end. So there are two ways to deal with this, either through PayPal donation or through Rabbi Kifa through the office to Daraba. Have a, a great Shabbat. Remember that we are still in the week of, uh, we are still in the Passover week. For those of you who are doing the solar Passover, which should be the case. And uh, also, uh, apart from the solar Passover, apart from that, those of you who missed the earlier part will have to go back and listen to the recording. And uh, I'm going to pass it back to Rabbi Kifa. And please be careful, because this has happened this week a couple of times with somebody. Please be careful about eating leaven. Check everything that you eat, that it doesn't contain yeast. Because if it does, you are in breach of the covenant. You're going to have to bring a, a transgression, in, inadvertent, ignorant transgression offering. Remember that. It's going to cost you $100 every time you commit a transgression. So try not to do that. Okay, Tada. Shabbat Shalom. Shalom Shalom. Awesome tribes of Israel. Uh, yeah, to Dr. Cohen, if I could be heard, can I get a one? I want to do a mic check over here. Uh, this morning, I was doing some resetting over here myself. <laughs> I had to, had to reset some laptops, so uh, the uh, instruction given by the Cohen was so apropos for me on this end because I was definitely doing some resetting over here. Uh, I'm running another laptop. I got, <laughs> look, I got about four laptops set up on the on the table here, but I'm running a, another laptop again, resetting. I think this is uh, so apropos. Uh, uh, these past six days of labor, I tell you, I've been, been questioning, having a lot of questioning and dealing with my subconscious and, you know, just questioning the mind and, and seeing what the mind is doing here. You know what I'm finding? And I think this is a, and I go in kind of mention this point, I, I, I think I ought to bring it up. But before I bring this point up, actually it's a question that it kind of may, may uh, uh, you know, give you, you all some more, um, uh, guidance and actually, uh, you know, take you deeper into your meditations and understanding of your I am and your, your inner selves. Well, before I do that, how many of you are in, in Pesach? How many of you are celebrating Passover now? Anybody? Put up a one. Put up a capital P if that's you. If you're in Passover mode already, you did the, you, you already in pass, Passover mode? Well, I, I wish you all a great uh, uh, Passover in doing this time. I just want to know, just, just for kicks and giggles, I just want to know how many of you are in Passover mode. Uh, I kind of don't tell my friends because they know that I'm Jewish as they as they understand it. But uh, we run into a lot of, uh, you know, again, and I do, you know, there are different times where you can celebrate it, which is great. You know, the point is, don't get caught up. Don't get, yeah... Uh, Abru, Abru said the website has different dates, uh, uh, 2021 and 27. Okay, also you're going to find that, you know, if you go to Habad, I think they started in, what, 19? Uh, Habad.org, I think, you know, uh, Eskenazi Jews are starting 19, 20, 20 somewhere in there. But anyway, what I, what, the point I'm trying to make is, is don't, you know, don't get caught up on the days. Whatever you want to do it. Yeah, yeah, 19, uh, yeah. So whatever days you want to do it, don't, don't, uh, don't get caught up too much on the days. You know, again, you may do it for different reasons. Some of you may be because of job reasons. Some of you, I, I mean, I, I think it's also important to look at the fact and understand the fact that, you know, you don't want to win the nations, not to cause 
going to keep modesty, but, you know, you truly want to have respect for whatever person's understanding is that they have. You know what I mean? You don't want to bash them and put them under the bus or, uh, or see them as uh, lower or lesser than you are because they're doing it on another day, maybe because they don't have understanding of certain things, because they're in ignorance in certain areas. And I mean that in a, in a, in a truly a humbling way when I say ignorance, because how many of you know, <laughs> you know, we at some levels are at some ignorance. We're going to always be at some levels of ignorance because we're always trying to learn and we're always trying to grow. And, the, you know, people, you know, say, oh, well, you call me ignorant, Rabbi, and you, you shamed me and you, you, you made me lose face because you called me ignorant. No, I'm not saying it in a bad way. It's just something that you do not know, something that you do not have understanding on. And I think that's important to understand as well. But back to one of the points that Akohin made earlier. He talked about this. He said, uh, he mentioned this, and I wrote this as a title. It actually just came to me this morning. Uh, what I do not know. In my resetting mode, <laughs> as I was resetting laptops and, and getting uh, PowerTalk fired up, and by the way, if you're doing any updates on PowerTalk, be careful because some, some of these updates may try to uh, mess with some of the devices that's going on inside the operations of the PowerTalk uh, platform itself. It may throw it off out of, out of Helter Skelter for a minute, but it'll come back into form, no worries. Um, Cohen was talking about the fact that uh, you know, give me the example of the man that had phoned him from Africa and wanted assistance with leprosy. And this brings, this brings, you know, brings to mind time and time again, especially these past six days of labor. It's just uh, how the Bible, as you all know, has been taken, right? And it has been parts and parcel of the Bible has been used basically by every religion or every quote unquote believer out there in a higher power in some way, shape, form, or fashion. May not have taken all of it, right? But they've taken parts and partials of it and so what you'll find is this is that a lot of them will come back to you and they'll have a lot of questions and they'll be confused on a lot of things and i guess the premise of my point is what we're, we're getting to is this is that you'll find that what i find is that people because they, they're not all in they don't put all the chips in when it comes to the torah this is the torah for whatever facet of your life and they only take in part and parcels they're running into a lot of problems. It's like they're running into, you know, a lot of roadblocks, a lot of situations, and they're they're confused. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. Is that they're, because they're not fully in, and maybe like they have one foot in, maybe they just have a shoe in. You mean? Is that like I call you was saying with this man with the leprosy? It's like, well, you know, you, you you're not going to get the full, you know, full blown treatment because you're not all the way in. You know what I mean? It's like, how can I instruct you on something that you're confused about when you don't, you're not even a family member? You know what I mean? And I don't mean to say that in a, in a bad way, but it's just like, well, how, how can you want to know about this when you have no clue about that? <laughs> you know what I mean? How are you going to get from... I mean, so this this is, seems to be an issue with religions as per se as a whole, but also with individuals that, you know, may not be affiliated with a religion, which is a good thing as well, <laughs> you know, because religions, I mean, all they do is shackle you in the hood with you and bamboozle you and leave you more confused and more distraught and more depressed than anything. But but they're, 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 they're seeking and finding, they're trying to find their way but they don't want to go fully all the way committed to the way. They just want to use part parts of the way and to help facilitate whatever the problem is at that time. You know what I mean? So like they're, they're having an issue. They just want to fix that. You know, it's like if you have a plumbing problem and you say, okay, well, I'm not going to pay for the put to come and fix this. What I'm going to try to do is uh, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do the DYI. I'm going to go to Home Depot and I'm going to get me some. Uh, I'm going to get me some duct tape and I'm going to just tape up the copper wire or the plastic wire. And you know that that's cool. This, this, I'm I'm just going to you know 
I'm not going to totally fix the problem, but I'm going to fix it long enough to where, you know, I, I'm comfortable, you know, with the little drip that's going to occur because I didn't fully fix it. And, you know, don't think I may need to replace it every few, you know, weeks or months because it just doesn't hold up. You understand what I'm saying? So it's like they don't get to the root source of the problem. This is what I'm finding with folks that truly have a desire to serve the Creator. I mean, I'm sitting back and I'm just watching humanity. I mean, I've been really, really doing that lately and, and just appreciating the full blown, you know, Mother Earth and, and nature and human nature and human beings and you sit there and how you interact with the human beings that are around you and and and, and what's being you know attracted to your environment and what's being manifested and drawn into your environment all of these things i mean these are are crucial things that a lot of it is just you know over our head sometimes is because we miss it why it's because we're you know we're too uh, caught up with other things that we don't really focus on what really is important. And, and it's just right around us in our universe as we know it. Some of you think when we say universe, you think we're talking about up, above the uh, ozone layer, you know, out there in space somewhere. But your universe is right around you right now, surrounding you. See yourself as that nucleus, and you have protons, neutrons, electrons just, just flowing around you right now. You, that, that great transmitter and receiver that you are. You, the super, the super family of Israel. I mean, my goodness. So, so a lot of times what we find is that a lot of issues are brought up, and and um, this this reset lecture, you know, was uh, truly spot on because what you find is that truly, many folks here on this earth haven't reset back to their you know human being status. You know what I mean to the the status of their being. They're humans, and then, you know, they're dealing with it, and they get on with life, but they have never done a reset. But they're trying to learn about resetting, but, you know, in trying to learn about resetting, they're only trying to, to put duct tape on a, on a big hole in, in the plumbing instead of changing out the pipes altogether. You know what I mean? We need to just go in and just pull up all the copper wire and maybe put the new plastic tubing in there. And now I saw that Home Depot that was there. I was like, wow. You know, technology is really off the charts these days. We're not running that PVC piping or that, you know, copper tubing in homes anymore. They're actually running this tough plastic, you know, wiring that's being run for your for your plumbing. Now, you know, for your water sources and for I was like, Wow, that's pretty awesome. Technology is truly a, <clears throat> something to behold in home building. And as all of you as well, you're building homes as well. Maybe not uh, physical homes, but you're building your spiritual homes. You're building your homes within yourselves. Your your your, your I am home. That that residence. You you know everybody talking about the you know the mansion. Your your mansion is already in you. You just probably need to dust it off. Maybe get the keys to the mansion now. And this is what the Kohen is truly giving you here. The sign of Aaron. And you see, this is another point that we must talk about. You know, truly, everybody says they believe in the Bible, but how many people are truly uh, you know, upholding to the Bible standard. And I and I thank the, the Kohi, the Honorable Kohi, the right and Honorable Kohi for giving way to me. I had to put that out there. Yeah, as, as, as I'm watching this Brexit stuff going on in the UK, I just, I really love the formalities of how they, how they deal in their government and their parliament. It's really, it's really something to behold. But, you know, you know, you know, you, we must give way to the Kohi. That's key. And what I see in this part is the same thing. You know, the Kohen is not for afterlife. The Kohen is for life now. You know, the priesthood for Israel is for Israel now. And what we see with a lot of religions, and I'm telling you, you see this, is that because they only, you know, only want to put duct tape on their situation when they have a true full, you know, and they need to change out the plumbing. And this is what you'll find. Not only with religions, but with individuals that phone into us, they'll say the same thing. They want you just to fix their problem, but their so-called problem as they know it, but they don't want to deal with the, they don't want to deal with the, with where the root source, you see. The solution is at the source, not with the problem. You understand? And I noticed that Hakoino you know, would tell you, you know, he talked about, I'm pretty sure he was telling you about the, the remedies that they have for cancers and all and all this and I tell you, it's it's a beautiful thing what's going on around the world. 
But you know, Hakodian, a lot of folks over here in North America are dying here in, 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 in the West. Why? It's because they don't look to the East. And they stay in these bubbles. And maybe that's said of some of you listening right now via YouTube. Or you may be in this room right now. Because you shelter yourself in a bubble and you don't see the world as this big world that's rotating around us. And you don't, because you don't see that, you, you limit yourself on what's available to you. The availabilities that are out there with your health, with your wealth, with your prosperity, with your relationships, in every aspect and area of your life. And there's some great things that's going on even with cancers. But a lot of people are just dying because of fear. And I tell you, and what I've been learning in these documentaries, a lot of these, you know, doctors are saying this, is that doctors have to in, instill fear in you. They have to have you fearful. So that lowers your ability to be able to reason properly. And then it almost puts you in like that, you know, sheep. It just, just led to the slaughter because you're just going to totally listen to what they say and hang on their every word. And the majority of the time, the doctors are not telling you things uplifting. How many of you know that? And it's sad to say that the majority of doctors today don't want you better. They, 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 they don't want you better because then you, 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 they can't collect off your insurance anymore because you're better. They lose business. Some of them really lost, the, the, you know, the true reason why they did get into medicine. Same way with nursing, same way probably with every profession. There's a lot of folks who are not in it for the caring and for the true healing and for the betterment of humanity, but they're in it for the almighty dollar, you see. So I think it's very, very important that we do understand that and that you, that you begin to open up your mind and see what the Kohen is doing. He's broadening your horizons, really telling you, giving you, you know, giving you, he's taking you to the source because the source is where the solution is. He's not just trying to fix your problem. He's not just trying to fix my problem. He's taking me to the source. Okay, here's the source of it. Deal with the source and there's no such thing as a problem anymore once you deal with the source. Source for humanity. I mean, is it God's will? Think about this now. Is it God's will for any anyone to miss their mark? anyone to sin as they know it. God doesn't run around here. You see, a lot of people have this understanding. How many of you are there where you thought at one time all God had the time to do, the creator of the heavens and the universes, is he's, he's trying to set up these obstacles so you could fail. How many of you thought that at one time? <laughs> you thought at one time? Yeah, I mean, come on. I'm laughing, but I, I had that same. I was like, well, God is testing me today. How many of you? Oh, he's coming to the test. He's going to see if I'm going to look at that woman in that skirt with those beautiful legs. Oh, I, oh I'm going to turn my head. I'm going to put on these sunshades. And I'm not going to look, and I'm going to pass the test, and I'm going to get this mark in my book of life. How many of you know what I'm talking about? That's what you run into. It's that type of mentality where you, you have this understanding that, that, that the creator, the source of all energies, the power, all he has time to do is, 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 set, you, is set traps for you every day he, so you can fail. And so he can say, ah. You see, he's pointing his big finger at you. Oh, you see, I told you you are a sinner, and you're going to go to hell, and blah, 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 blah. And so your whole life is, you, you're running in fear and anxiety because, oh, man, I, I don't want to fail God. And, in, and, and with that mentality, not only do you fail God, but you fail yourself. You truly become a failure. You know what I mean? And it's all because of that thought process. And, and, and then you're running in fear. See, a lot of folks, not only doctors, but a lot of folks out here, they prey on your fear. This is one of the greatest ways where they, where they hoodwink and bamboozle you and, and they put you into robot mode to where they can command you to do something and you just do. It's that you, you're running on this fear model. It's like, oh, oh, I have this. Well, this person had this, and they died of this. So I guess I have this, and I'm going to die of it, too. And they, you prepare yourself. You already, think about it. You prepare yourself to die. When Mother Earth is saying, no, I want you to live. I want you to have nourishment. I want you to you, you multiply. I don't, I'm not trying to subtract from you. I'm trying to multiply your years. I'm not trying to take your year from, from you. 
See, you're not being told these things. The son of Aaron here, if you're here in this room, are you listening via YouTube? You're not listening by happenstance. This is an opportunity for you to truly have a paradigm shift and totally change your life for you, for your good, however you may perceive it. Not what the pastor told you or what you've been conditioned over all these years that, oh, because I'm doing things this way, because I was taught that it's this way. My grandmama was poor, grandpa was poor, daddy was poor, mama was poor, so guess what? I'm going to be poor. No, it doesn't have to be that way. Father had this ailment. My grandpa had this ailment. Grandmama had this ailment, so I'm going to have it. No, it doesn't have to be that way. Again, all you're harping on is problems. A problem, a problem, a problem. You're never looking at, and, and I hope Hakohin is truly making you you, you you look inside of your mind and totally begin to think. You see? And begin to think. Oh, there has let what's the source problem here? Where is well, well let's get to the source so I can get to the solution of how to change these things. Instead of just conforming to the chain, and instead of just conforming to 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 the conditioning. Oh, you just conform. Oh yeah, you have three weeks to live. Okay, okay, doctor, thank you. I received that that I have three weeks to live. I received that I'm not going to make it to my next birthday. Are you kidding me? Because you, we put ourselves sometimes in these bubbles. And everybody in this room, and my desire for everybody in this room, everybody listening to the MP3, is that you you bust the bubble. And you see this big world, this broad, big, massive world, awesome planet Earth that we live on, as a nourishing mother that's bringing nourishment and comforting you. And what are we giving Mother Earth back in return? Think about that. Ask yourself that question. You don't have to text that in. It's not keyboard warrior time here. But you don't have to text it in. But think, think about it. What, what are you doing to give back to Mother Earth? Every, a lot of, like, you look at the planet Earth, everybody's taken from Mother Earth. But what is being given back to Mother Earth? Can anybody give me some examples of how you can give back to Mother Earth real quickly? Anybody? What can you do to give back to Mother Earth? And Mother Earth is the comforter. She's the nurturer. She's the producer. I mean, what can you do to give back? And sometimes you may say, well, I mean, it's just a simple, can anybody give me some examples? I want you to think this morning or this afternoon or this night, whenever you're listening to this, you know, this lecture. But what, what can you do to give back to Mother, to Mother Earth? Keep it clean, or do you? That's a good point. You miss your saying, give to the poor. Rabbi Zakari said, recycling, recycling. They, you see, people think, oh, Rabbi, oh, it's too difficult for me to give back. No, it's not. It's quite simple. How about some of you plant a tree in your backyard? Fruit tree. Plant some, you know, roses. Types of trees that bees like, and they can go and they can pollinate or other insects. You see what I'm talking about? Simple as that. Oh, Rabbi, I don't have a yard. Well, buy a plant. Keep it in your house. Grow you some herbs in your house. How about that? Think about it. You understand? It could be as simple as that. It's that simple. Just to give back of the earth. We always want to take, 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 take. But we need to think about giving back. Think about that. You ever thought about it? Just giving back. Giving of yourself. Giving of your energy. Meaning your money. Your time. Because some value time. They value that. Giving up your time, your experiences, but just giving back. You see? And it can come in all ways, shapes, forms, and fashions. Use your imagination. But we must consider these things. And so when we go back to our initial premise, and my question is this, and you know, as I ask questions a lot, is are you truly going to fix your so called problem or your situation? when you haven't went to the source. But you want answers from, you want answers from the book of life that can give you, it truly has the answers in it. But if you apply the answers without fully accepting and receiving the source, can your problem be fixed? I mean, think about this for a minute. 
or will you perpetually continue to have more problems, more situations? Because, and you're wondering why, and some people give up on God as they know it. It's because they found that, oh, God doesn't fix my problems. You see, because they think God is in the business of just fixing problems. During this time, during this month of miracles in our history, isn't this a month of miracles? But they only see God as, as a God that, oh, I, I, I only go to God for my problems to get fixed, just to fix my problems. Never, never considering, for the most part, oh, am I truly in alignment with God? Am I one with source energy? I mean, come on, let's think about that for a minute. You come to, and most folks only come to God as, as Jimmy. And if your name is Jimmy, no offense. God, what can you give me? What can you give me? My name is Jimmy. What can you give me? What can you give me? Give me, give me, give me, give me. Truly missing their mark. Truly, because it, it's just a, it, it, you, you, it's a, it's a one-sided relationship. When maybe God is saying the same thing one of our, our famous presidents said here in North America. <laughs> what can you, what can, don't ask what you, your country can do for you. What can you do for your country? <laughs> you remember that saying? Who said that, by the way, for you Americans over here in North America? Who said that? Great leader. Great president. <laughs> Who said that? Don't ask what your country can do for you. Ask what can you do for your country. There you go. To top of that. To top of that, Mishpaha. Who's John Kennedy? What a great statement, right? Why sane? But this is what we need to ask ourselves this day. And I think it's very important because, you know, you're going to find yourself playing that same old record. You're just going to be a, just a bunch of questions, but never, never no real solutions to your problem because you're just still just a bunch of questions, you see? Still just a bunch of questions. But why isn't this working for me? Why, why, why? Why can't I ever get on? Because you haven't gone back to source. You haven't fixed source. Your questions are all, yeah, when you say, Rabbi, don't ask questions, I'm not saying that. But majority of the people, they, they, they're asking questions and not fixing their problem. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. They're asking questions and they want answers, but the answers don't line up with where, the, where, the, where they are in their life. You see, there's no alignment, Rabbi Zakaria. Everything is just out of whack. And what happens when a car is out of whack, Rabbi Zakaria? When a, when a car is not properly aligned, you're going to find yourself not being able to stay on the road. And that's where a lot of folks find themselves this day. But I tell you what, when you go back to source, when you go back to the source and say, okay, let me, let me put everything else to the side, everything I've been taught, everything I've been told, everything I grew up around. And this is where every person needs to get to. So if you listen to this message, I don't care what your religion is, your religious affiliation, your non-religion is, it, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Let's just talk as beings, as human beings. To get all the mumbo-jumbo, I'm not here to give you goosebumps. I'm not here to make you feel good. You should already be feeling good anyway. That's default setting. Feel good. And if you don't feel good, get yourself to feeling good. Tell yourself you do feel good. Because you're telling yourself you don't. That's why you don't feel good. Because you are telling yourself you don't feel good. And guess what? The manifestation of you not feeling good has been manifested by what you, th what you think about yourself. Oh, I don't feel good. Oh, I'm never going to have no man. Oh, I'm too old. Well, guess what? All those things going to be brought right into your life just the way you said them. Just the way you imagine them. Just the way you speak them. Well, Rabbi, you don't understand. I have this situation. Oh, I have this problem, and it cannot be solved. Oh, how many times have you heard that before? Oh, Rabbi, this is life and death. Oh, is it? Yeah, that's what you, you called it that. So that's what it will be for you. <laughs> that's not what it is for me. 
You see, we have to bring a, a total different way of thinking to the mix. You have to reset your mind. Because you've been dwelling there for such a very long time. You have to reset your mind. That's going to take a, right, a while. You've got to reboot it, reset it. Maybe even just change it out. I'm not saying through surgery, but you need to replace that old mindset. Use your mind for the wonderful tool that it is. I'm going to say that every Shabbat, I'm going to say it. Because I want it to get inside of you. Inside of your inner man. Use your mind for the wonderful tool that it is. Don't let your mind control you. You know, I've been listening to these, uh, to these doctors speak about cancer. The C word, and nobody wants to talk about cancer and all this. In the West, they, I mean, that's, that's C word is, is, is condemnation for death, really, basically, here in the West. They look at their cancer word, and they, they cancer by, follows, after cancer, you know what follows? Uh, the end. That's the mentality of a lot of people. Oh, that's the end, man. Oh, or give up. Oh, that's it. Shutting it down. Let me just go on this chemo because that is what the conditioning tells you. Oh, I take this chemo. And I tell you, I'm listening to these doctors, and they make such good points. They're like, how are you going to cure something if I put more more poison into your body? I was like, wow, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> how are you going to cure something by putting poison into your body? You see? And doctors are going to keep doing this and keep doing this and keep doing this and keep doing this until they kill you. You see, because the whole premise is not to get you better. They tell you, doctors will tell you, oh, you have this amount of time to die. And I'm going to facilitate helping, help, help, helping kill you. It's going to be a slow process, you see. But as we talk about the physical side of death, we talk about physical death, you all understand that there's a spiritual side as well. And you have a lot of folks that are spiritually dying of, of a cancer. What would you consider a, a spiritual cancer this day? And for those of you who may think, well, the spiritual word, I'm really not understanding where you're going here. Let's talk about the metaphysical side, or let's talk about the conscious, or unconscious side, or the consciousness side of things. On the on the on the, uh, the, sp the spiritual side, in other words, which you may be more familiar with. Here's what's said: Go to church. Absolutely, that's one. Religion is one of the biggest things. Self, that's another. To top of your responses, by the way, self, that's another one. It's because how you envision, how you imagine, how you see yourself is so important. How you see yourself. The Bible is the word of God. Oh, it absolutely is. But they're taking God's word and they conscrewed it and, and, and just taking it and all out of context. And before you know it, you have a whole bunch of problems. A whole bunch of problems. A whole bunch of problems. You have many questions, no answers. And you never get on with your life. And your life is just running in fear. You see? You're running in fear. You can't find yourself because you're too busy trying to operate and fix all of these other things that you're so fearful of. And all you concentrate, all you use, that great brain of yours, that great source power of yours, you, all you use it on is you, you fear of the future and fear of the past. You never live and you never find yourself present. The Kohen, the son of Aaron, wants to put you present. He wants to put you in the now, right now, here, in the present. That's what's important. But humanity... The human side of you keeps you in fear. It keeps you in, 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 in the past of how you didn't do right, how you're not going to be right, you're never going to be right, or it keeps you in the future. Oh, you are, you are so anxious. You're taking all these pills because you're worried about what's going to happen to you in the future. And you never focus on right now. Smelling the roses right now, or as our queen says, having a life full of oysters right now. 
at this instant, being healthy now, not worrying about cancer in the future or your remission in the past. No, you healthy now. Tomorrow is going to be, you're going to be healthy now tomorrow. <laughs> Again, it's all about mindset. Many people shorten or lessen their life because of how they think of themselves and their perception of what they know of as their reality. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> it's so very true. And another thing that you have to understand, and which is very important, why a lot of folks are just like sheep led to the slaughter, is that they're listening to the wrong information. They listen because God has all given us two ears, right? They listen, but they, they're listening to the wrong let's just say leader, or their source of listening. It's not that of a, one I would want to be connected to or at, 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 at most plugged into. I wouldn't want to be plugged into power source. So what you'll find in this parsha is just like I found, and I'm pretty sure a majority of you found as well, is that Israel, the Torah, the Torah, is for Israel, right? Anybody can be Israel, but the Torah is for Israel. That's what you must understand. Let's get let's get to the meat and potatoes. Last time I checked, was the rabbi Yeshua, Jesus of Nazareth, as some of you call him? Last time I checked, what was his status? Was he a Christian? Did Jesus ever proclaim to be a Christian? Did Jesus ever proclaim to be a Catholic? Look at his actions. You see, come on, come on now, y'all stay with me for a minute. You see, this is what I mean by how, how people have taken, they have taken parts of the, our books and they, they, they only use what's comfortable for them to use. They don't look, they, 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 they pick and choose. They'll say, okay, we'll, I, I'll, I'll embrace this part of the Torah of Moses because you look at Jesus' own words like a lot of people want to, they, they want to shout that out from the mountaintop. Okay, let's, what did, well, what did Jesus do? What did Jesus say? That's what I'm going to do. They just give you a bunch of lip service. And they, they focus only on that, but not at the source of who Jesus really was. Now, can anybody tell me who was Jesus? Who was Yeshua? Who was he? What was he? What family did he come up in? What was his uh, affiliation? What was his cultural cultural background? You see, last time I checked, Jesus was a Jew, wasn't he? Jesus went. He taught in the temple, didn't he? Come on, let's let, let's 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 be correct now. Let's let's get this correct now. It's important. It is very very important that that. That we, we, we look at that. He, he was. Uh, now, when we look at the Torah, did Jesus follow the Torah? Yes. Did Jesus keep Torah? Did he keep Torah? Come on, let's, let's be real. Everybody, everybody else wants to say that Jesus, he came and he started this new religion and he, he started this new thing and he said uh, many things that they've taken out of context that he really said with proper understanding of the source. Source is key. Source is key. The Master Yeshua, Jesus of Nazareth, he stressed this as well. His source was what? Well, what does the laws of Moses tell us about this situation? And when he healed someone, what's the first thing that Jesus told him to do? The Master Yeshua, Jesus of Nazareth, he said, you know what? You need to go see who? Did he say you need to go see the pastor? and put some money in a donation box? Or did he say you need to go do three Hail Marys and two Our Fathers and then you are be completely healed and your healing will be, you know, etched and stuff? What did he say? You <laughs> see, again, we have to look at the actions here. And see, so what I say for humanity this day, what I say for humanity, human beings here on this earth that you you, you 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 desire and you aspire to have a connection 
to the creator of the universe, to the the, 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 the power source. Let's just call him the power. I don't care what name you give him because at the end of the day, it, the name doesn't matter. Too many folks get caught up on name. Name does not matter because, listen, like I was telling a great friend of mine the other day, when you stand before the creator, he's not going to ask you, did you know my name? <laughs> Come on, did you say my name right? Believe me. That's so far that, that that's so far from reality. He's not gonna say, okay, uh, before Saint Peter lets you into the pearly gate, I, there is one question. It's gonna be the secret to all things. Did you say my name right? Come on, come on, man. But this a lot of folks have this mentality because it's been it's been just conditioned into them from birth. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, because you're affiliated with this this religion, this group, this this family or whatever, you have to do things this way. And our way is the right way. It's the only way. Everybody, Lottie Dottie, every one of these religions says their religion is right. I mean, is that not true? They'll tell you our religion is right. And then you go to the Baptist, they'll say religion is right. Then you go to the Catholics, they'll tell you their religion is right. You go to the Pentecostals, they'll tell you they're doing what's right because they wear dresses and they don't put makeup on. And y'all condemn y'all gonna go to hell because y'all wearing all this stuff off. And y'all look, you understand what I mean? Everybody has it right. In their own mind. I mean, but this, I mean, come on. Let's get to the source. Let's get to the source. Everybody proclaiming this, that, the other. Oh, I love Yeshua. I love the Master. I want to serve the Master. I want to do what's right by the Master. My pastor's telling me I need to do this, but I'm confused, and and and, and I'm looking at I'm looking at the life of my pastor, and it's not lining up with what he's actually teaching. Or well, I'm looking at the life of my pastor, and and I'm I'm not seeing what's supposed to be there. The infinite abundance, the mu the multiplication. I see subtraction. I see division. What well, our default setting is for us to do what? Multiply the earth. Not divide and subtract. Not divide and conquer. But we all supposed to be in this together. You understand? We're, we're, we're all in this together. This is the beauty of Israel being dispersed into exile as we're in our Passover mode. It, we're in the month of miracles, Brook Hashem. What a great miracle it is for you to be dispersed and scattered in the nations where you are. The Bible, times and time again, talks about light. Light, to be light, to be a light, to be a light. But truly, what does that mean at the end of the day? You're supposed to walk around with a candle all, everywhere you go all day long? Okay, yeah, I'm going to carry the candle over here. Oh, I got my candle. Ooh, wait a minute. Candle went out. Give me a second. Let me relight my candle real quick because I got to keep my mouth burning because I'm a light. Many people think they have it right. They right in their own sight. Righteousness is only that. That's a man-made term. You're right in your own sight. But do you have right standing? See? And to have right standing, we gotta get back to the source as human beings. Let's talk, let's talk, let's talk about humanity here. We gotta go back to default settings. We gotta go back to the book of Bereshit, the book of Genesis to the default setting and what the creator has given to us. Now, you might be saying, well, Rabbi, you're kind of talking out of two ears because you're saying, wait a minute, we're not supposed to be, well, you, you, you're saying we need to segregate. No, I'm not saying we need to segregate ourselves. Actually, I'm saying that we need to open ourselves up. You see? See, a lot of folks float through this room, and because, you know, uh, the Kohen, the son of Aaron, may say this, he may say that. Rabbi Kippur from the tribe of Judah, he may say this, he may say that. Oh, I don't agree with that. So they'll take off and leave. Because everybody's trying to find, like, a comfort zone. Nobody wants to go back to the default settings. Nobody wants to go back to the source. Very few do want to truly go back to the source of all living things. To the very source that breathed into their nostrils and animated them and formed them from the dust of the ground. Let's get back to the source. And at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's within, 
It's human beings, it's the being side, that you have a desire. You try to fill it with anything. You go through your whole life trying to put other things. You put other things that won't work. It could be a woman, it could be a man, it could be a job, it could be money, it could be a relationship, it could be whatever, food. <laughs> it could be that chocolate because I'm a big chocolate. It could be Willy Wonka's chocolate factory. It could be whatever you want. You're trying to fill it with whatever. Boom, 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 boom. And you go through your whole life trying to fill it. And, and, and you get a you get a little rays of, of 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 happiness and joy, but it's not the true default setting of love, peace, and that joyous. Just until you go back to to the ultimate source of all things. Put religion to the side. You're gonna have to do that for one minute. You're gonna have to put religion to the side. You're gonna have to put what Mama said to the side, and you're gonna have to open yourself up. And Marie was talking about coming out of that bubble. You see, because you get cancer over here in America, and the, the bubble cancer over here in America will tell you, you're going to die. You're going to die. <laughs> Death is upon you. When they hear cancer in the East, they say, okay, let me go see Dr. So-and-so. He's going to give me these herbs that come from Mother Earth, and I'm going to be fine. And I'm going to have a great quality of life. And Mother Earth is going to extend my life. Mother Earth is going to multiply my years because that's default setting for humanity that has been given dominion over this earth. So imagine this. We've been given charge over Mother Earth. We've been given dominion over it. We must be care. We must take care of Mother Earth. Embrace her, comfort her, keep her. And she's given to us those same things. And what does she do? She begins to multiply us. And all areas, she begins to bring produce us and give a produce. Stick your finger in the soil. I mean, isn't that so? It's, it's, it's beautiful, isn't it? But that's 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 default setting. That's not running around here chasing after some preacher, some pastor, some evangelist. That has nothing to do with that mumbo jumbo. That's a big dog and pony show. Let come on. I mean, if you know what I'm talking about, some of you may have been a part of that dog and pony show. I was for a while. But then my default, my in, my inner man was like, wait a minute. How many of you talk to yourself and you and you and you, you, you have conversations with yourself and you actually talk back to yourself? Because I was like, wait a minute, there's got to be more to this life on this earth than what I'm going through right now. There's got to be more. There's got to be more than this. I want more. I don't want to be lessened. I want more. We're supposed to be blessed, not less. <laughs> Think about that for a minute. As the Bible says in the King James, we're supposed to be blessed, not less. Why do I feel so lessened? Shouldn't be. Something's wrong. But it's unfortunate. Many people don't get to the point to where they can realize, ah, uh, there's something I'm going to have to change. That's a big part of the universal laws, is that you're going to have to have a willingness to want to change some things in your life, maybe even change your whole life, because it's going to be a total paradigm shift, and everybody around you is going to think you're strange. And so what? You may not have many friends, but who cares? Because now you're becoming a friend with that inner man, that inner self. Now you're dusting off the cobwebs to your default setting who you really are, and not what they said you're going to be. <laughs> you know what I mean? At the end of the day, you ask yourself, what makes me happy? Am I happy? What makes me happy? And then you pursue happiness. What gives me joy? And then you go and you pursue joy. Yeah, they say you're strange, huh? That's okay. Strange is good. Because you don't want to be like the robots, just you know, you just want to be like all the computerized sheep that just go into the proverbial slaughter. But you want to leave positive, good, great energy here on this earth. That's giving back to Mother Earth. It's leaving positive energy, positive frequency, positive vibration. The Jamaicans will tell you about that. They love some good vibes. And how they get it, then, you know, they do smoke big tree, whatever they do. If that's going to give them good vibes, if, if that's preventing the Jamaicans from going to rob a bank, hey, hallelujah. Instead of leaving all this negative energy, negative, you know, you think about this for a minute. 
And I don't, I'm not picking on Jamaicans, but I mean, let's just face it. I've seen the Jamaicans, they're the most passive people you ever want to meet. They're very passive. They're not even trying to beat you upside the head, clobber you, and just that the other and the third. I was telling this to a good friend of mine just yesterday, just so I open it up. You know, the revelations that's coming to me as to him, hope my mother wisdom gives them to me for my is that when you slow life down, it truly becomes quick for you. I've told you that. You, you all remember that? i told you all that. When you slow life down, once you slow down, things become clearer and also quicker. Think about that for a minute. But you've got to slow things down. Then you can get clarity. But when you have a life that's just healthy, scared, oh, gotta go do this, gotta run and do this, I gotta take care of this, gotta, 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 do, 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 gotta do this, you never find time for yourself. And though your aspirations are so noble, is that you want to put on that cape with the big H on it. How many know that cape with the big H? You're the super Hebrew. And you just, you, you feel like that you have to save the world when you know that is not your mandate? Nowhere in Torah was Israel told to save the world. Think about this for a minute. We were just told to be a light. <laughs> just to go and live a certain lifestyle. Nowhere were we told to go to go save the world. Think about this for a minute. The Master Yeshua, Jesus never said, I come that you may have life and that life more what? Abundantly. You want to have an abundance of a life. I want to have an infinite abundance amount of life as I as I'm connected to the to the source, the infinite source, the divine presence that's always present. Book of Shem. That's good stuff, man. That's great stuff. Once it becomes inside of you, and not just mere words. You see, because a lot of folks are just hoodwinked and bamboozled, and they can quote you words. They'll give you a lot of words. But there's no substance behind it. And there's no source behind the words. That's why they run up a lot of problems. I know a lot of preachers. I know a lot of rabbis. They can quote you the Bible up and down the block. How many of you know people like that? Man, they can quote you some Bible verses. But there's no there's no source behind it. The, the words have no power because it's not connected to the source. To the divine presence. Everybody tells you words has meaning. That's true. That's true. But if your vibration, the amps on your transmitter, because you got to see yourself as an as this awesome Adam, awesome Israel. You got to see yourself as this Adam. And what you're doing every day is you're receiving and you're transmitting. You're putting out energy, positive and negative, and it's coming back. You're receiving, you're transmitting that. That's what's going on when you get to the source of things. And it has nothing to do with you being con uh, uh, connected to, to any kind of affiliation. To connect, this is source connection here. Now, some, some, uh, your, your, your strength of your frequency will vary. See, that depends on you know your ampage and your connection to the source. See, many folks are connected to religion. Many folks are connected to knowledge. Many folks are connected to all of these, 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 <laughs> you know, let's just say pseudo source, power sources. <laughs> Is that they seem like they're fulfilling. Oh, this love relationship, this, and you see, and, and they make that their, their ultimate power source. Uh, their children, maybe it's their wife, maybe it's their husband. Maybe it's that job. Maybe it's that beautiful car that you have in the garage, that nice home. Whatever it may be. And, and believe me, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with material things. Material things are great. That's abundance. That's what the Master Yeshua was talking about. Abundance in all areas of your life. He didn't exclude, you know, material wealth. Because, by the way, he was wealthy. He had money. Don't let these movies fool you in Hollywood when you're in the thing, oh, Jesus was walking around in some old sheets, <laughs> you know, look at old rag tag clothes because that wasn't the case. <laughs> I mean, he come from a wealthy family. Come on.
But religion will all hoodwink it by bullshit. Oh, if you want to get into heaven, then you have to lose all of your material wealth, and you 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 have to become poor. Because the more poor you are, the more the more the better standing you will have in the kingdom to come. That's a bunch of hogwash, man. Believe me, you've been put on this earth to have an abundance of a life to multiply. Is that just with children? No, that's in every aspect of your life. Multiplying your health, multiplying your wealth, multiplying your relationships, multiply with your job, multiply with every aspect of your life. Every aspect. See, but the, the one of the biggest root problems that I see as I examine, as I'm a student of human nature, student of nature, Love, that's why I love traveling different, to different, different countries and, and seeing different cultures. Because it gives you a better perspective on human nature. Gotta get out of the bubble, Ms. Faha. Gotta get out of that bubble. And what, what you find, Ms. Faha, is that at the end of the day, everybody has the same desires. They have the same wants in many aspects. As far as my default, everybody want to be happy. There's a few people I know that want to be sad, but most people want to be happy. Most people want a semblance of a good life, however they perceive that. But you see, here's where the problem comes in. What I see world over is one thing is hiccups, stumbling blocks, rockage, is who are they listening to? That's one of the major things. You see, because to be a great teacher... You have to be an awesome student. Think about this for a minute. So the question is, all of us need to have mentors. I mean, you need to learn. I'm learning this from every aspect of life. Is that you have to have a mentor. Someone you look up to. Do you not see it in our history? Look at our history. Look at our history. Look at our history. Israel looked up to who? Can you tell me? The Hebrews, when they were in Egypt, <laughs> who did they look up to? You always have to have somebody that you must look up to. And see, that that pattern is still played out world over. Everybody's looking up to somebody. Everybody is looking up to somebody. And that's a good thing. That's default setting. Look up. For the kingdom is not like broke our shell. We must look up to someone. But who do you listen listen to? That's heavy stuff, man. I'm telling you. That's heavy. That's revelations. That is groundbreaking stuff. You can meditate on this stuff for a very long time to get understanding and continue to get understanding. Because you never get to a point where you fully understand. You're always understanding. Remember what I told you? A great student is going to, a great teacher is going to be an awesome student. But everybody just wants to be a great teacher. Nobody wants to be an awesome student, you see. Everybody wants to be the great teacher. Nobody wants to be the student. It's like the chiefs with the Indians. Everybody wants to be the chief. Nobody wants to be the Indian. You see? But when you're in Indian mode, and when you're in student mode, the key, I'm telling you, is crucial. Is who are you listening to? You see, everybody wants Bible understanding and understanding for about the Bible. But who do you go to to understand about the Bible? What did God say according to God? Who are you supposed to go to with understanding according to the Bible? And when you look at our partial here, I mean, it's, it's explained away once again. Who are you to go to with any kind of situation when it comes to, That's what I love about the Kohanim. I don't know many of them. I know two. One I know quite personally. The Kohanim. The sons of Aaron, the priesthood. Think about this for a minute. Anytime we had any kind of issue, you see, they're, 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 they're so skilled. And what I see is, because today I don't see many Kohanim, but the one that I do know, the one that I do know personally, he's been given skills in many different areas. All of you know this as well, if you've been under him for any, any, any amount of time. Whilst in ancient times, the, the Kohi would specialize in certain things. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. Some were specialized with leprosy. Others would specialize and be used and be trained up from children.
to be uh, 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 servicing in the temple. Think about this. Think about this for a minute. So all of them had a role, role to play. And just like we, do, we too, as human beings, as children of Israel, we all have a role to play. Now, sometimes we act out of our character. This is where we find ourselves in trouble. Sometimes we think we're supposed to be doing something when we're really not supposed to be doing that. And this will, this will, this will find us in trouble. You understand what I mean? We think, well, I know I'm doing God's will. I'm doing what God's supposed to do. Listen, if I thought I was supposed to be a Kohen, which I'm not, I didn't stay at a Holiday Inn last night, and I'm definitely not a Kohen. But if I thought to myself, oh, well, I, I woke up this morning, got out of bed, and said, oh, today I want to be a uh, priesthood. I'm sons of Aaron. I'm descendants of, of, of Aaron, and I'm one of his, his sons. So everything in this Bible dealing with that is to me. You understand what I'm saying? You'll find yourself, I'll find myself in more problems because that's not my role. Many times we put and we cast titles on ourselves that are not our role. It's not for us to do. It may take years for you to find out what your role is, truly. But what you can do during that time is just do the basics. I was telling this to a good friend of mine just the other day, not that yesterday, is go back to the basics. Don't forget who your first love is. Go back to those basics. Go, don't forget. Even though you may raise up, you may get high, still remain low because then you'll get higher. You see? Don't forget about the basics. What are the basics? Well, you got to tap into source, source power. you got to tap into the source. Not a, not, a, not a religion, not a faith, but you got to tap into source. Many people come with questions about the Bible. Can anybody tell me who are the uh, uh, officiators over the Bible and its questions? Can anybody tell me, is the Bible the history of the Catholics? Is the Bible the history of the Baptists? Yes, Rabbi, it is. John the Baptist was in there. Is the Bible... The history of the Pentecostals? Can somebody tell me? Come on, let's just be real. The Bible is written, right? It is history of what people? Can anybody tell me? This is multiple choice today. We're going to play multiple choice. <laughs> Can anybody tell me? Okay, Israel. Somebody got says Jewish history. Somebody Israel. Okay. It is is the Bible okay? Uh, another person says Jews, the Hebrews. Oh, Rev Rev forty five says the Hebrews. Shabbat shalom to you, Rev forty five. So, so can you tell me who is this? His? Okay, so now now we're coming to a consensus. We come to a consensus on right. Who is this history written? Who is this history about? Now I tell you. You go to some of these churches and they'll, they'll, they'll tell you that this is their history. They have adopted this history. Correct me if I'm wrong. But majority of folks that believe in the Bible have adopted the history of the Jews. Am I correct? In some, in some instances, maybe they, they, they're picking and choosing. They're picking and choosing, but they, they're pulling some Jewish history into and conforming into whatever they want to believe in and make up. They create this, they make this picture, and they, and they, and they call it their own. Am I correct? I mean, even, even the, you know, what we know as, as the Eskenazi Jews and all these other sects of Jews have done the same thing. And they, and they dressed it up with a lot of tradition. A lot of tradition. We're not leaving Judaism out of, out of the religions because that's just another religion as well. No one didn't get off the boat saying, I, I'm a Jew. He didn't get off the boat saying that, did he? Think about that for a minute. No one didn't get off the boat saying, yes, I'm Jewish, and now we need to enact all these traditions. No, no one was worried about taking care of all these animals, man. Getting his family situated at the end of the day. So what we find here is that a lot of folks have a lot of questions about you know, what the Bible says, what it really means, blah, blah, blah. But again, it can be taken out of context. How? It's because they don't go back to the source. 
You see, you must learn and understand the Bible from source understanding. And when you realize that source understanding is uh, that the Bible is, is, is a culmination of Jewish history, or of the, of the Israelite history, or of the Hebrew history before, you know, <laughs> before the, you know, the smackdown on, uh, on, on, on the Egyptians, you know, they were, just, they were Hebrews. The Bible says that a Abraham, he was called Abrahu, a Hebrew. This is when you start to really begin to understand when you take it from that source. Now, here's the question. Who has been given authority to teach the Hebrew Bible, the Jewish Bible, the Jewish history? Who has been given authority to give us? Now, come on, let's look at this now. We've got to look at this. This is important. Who has been given the authority to to make decisions when it comes to what needs to go on. And after asking that question, I want to ask another question. Is this, has that authority, have we been given a memo that the authority has changed? Do we serve a God of change? Think about this for a minute. Do we serve a God of change? Rabbi Zakaria says the Kohanim period with explanation marks behind it. Now you see, this is where the problem comes in. Is that a lot of folks have problems because they have adapted Jew Jewish Hebrew history. They've adapted it. They've taken some parts of it and say, okay, yeah, uh, yeah, this, oh, I, I like doing this part. But yeah, here's another point. How, how, how many people world over that say they believe in the Bible are celebrating Passover? Think about that. You see, that, that, that proves my point about the picking and choosing. Mandated holidays. Now, I'm not knocking those that, you know, you want to do your Christmas, you want to do all these other things. Hey, I'm cool with that. That's fine. But what's, what's the requirement according to source energy? Let's get back to source. And what are the, are the high holy days or festival days that we're supposed to be following? If you say you believe in the Bible, if you say you you love Jesus and you want to serve Yeshua and you want to you want to obey His will, come on now. If you can't say "Oh me," you might want to say "Oh my." See, this is where we get to. This is what I'm talking about. How when somebody has a plumbing problem, they just put duct tape on this thing. And you're not the wiring going in and taking it a copper wiring out and replacing it with that new plastic. That new high tech plastic stuff that they have and they're running through your house now, you see? This is where we find ourselves. So we're going to continue to have a world with many problems until they go back to the source. And this is why all of you are so fortunate listening via YouTube or even listening live in this room right now is because not only are you fortunate, but there you took desire to know, you want to know the facts on the ground. Forget all these truths. Truths are just opinions of men. <laughs> and men have a lot of opinions, by the way. So do women. But when you want the facts on the ground, this is why we, we have to go back to source. Don't look at your problem. Go back to the source. Once you go back to the source, you'll fix the problem, so-called problem, or the situation, or the experience that you're going through. And like our colleague was saying earlier, if you don't, it's going to be a vicious cycle. It's just going to keep repeating itself. Like the bell bottles, just gonna come back in style. Go out of style, come back. Go out of style, come back. Butterfly collars, go out of style, come back. Go out of style, come back. You're gonna continue to, continue to, you never deal with the situation. You just put duct tape. You just put duct tape on that hole in your plumbing. Eventually, the duct tape is gonna wear out and that hole is gonna, it's gonna cause some more water damage. So when someone comes up to me and says, you know, hey, I, I believe in the Bible, I say, okay, I take it at face value because they're making a great statement, <laughs> powerful words. But is it backed up with source? Is there any source behind it? Is, is there any secret sauce behind it? Or is it just mere words? Or are you just looking at the cardboard box? Nice picture on the box, right? Oh, that picture looks good. I, I, I like going through these, you know, grocery stores, and you see, you know how they have the, I, I remember, you know, 
When I was in the military, I used to eat a lot of those meals. You know how to have those meals that, you know, you just put them in the microwave, and you go into the grocery store, and you see, oh, that, that meal, it looks, in that, that picture on the front, the cover, oh, it looks so beautiful. Oh, that meat looks good. And they got little vegetables in there, and it just looks beautiful. And they paint this nice picture on on the outside of TV dinner. I guess they used to call them TV dinners. I remember TV dinners. There may be no name for them today. I don't know. It's been a minute since I had them kind of meals. Book of Shem. I'm, I'm eating authentic Chinese food. Book of Shem. Oh, that, uh, yeah, another day in paradise description. But anyway, back to the TV dinners. <laughs> back to the TV dinners. Paint a nice picture on the front. Cover of the box looks good. But when you take your stuff out, how many of you know what I'm talking about? You 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 you, you, you take that little you you take your little TV dinner out of the box and you're looking at this package and it looks all white. It looks like my goodness, what the heck is this stuff? And then you put it in the microwave. You follow the directions, just like they say on the package. And then you take it out and it's not looking like what you see on the cover of that box that you just purchased, right? It's not the same. <laughs> and you, you imagine a certain taste on the box, but when you taste it, it actually come out of your microwave, it don't taste the same. You're like, wait a minute, this doesn't taste like I envisioned it was going to taste. What happened here? You see, that's what's going on when we look at the spiritual side and we look at the history of the Hebrews. Is that many folks have adopted our way of living, our way of life. But, again... They have adopted to change it. Okay. Yeah, that's cool what the Hebrews did. We'll do that. But then we're going to add our little bells and whistles to it. Our little customs, our traditions. And before you know it, bada boom, bada bing, instant religion coming out of the microwave. Bam! It may look good on the, on, on the box, like the TV dinner. But it actually tastes nasty. And it's actually not nutritious for you. <laughs> You see what I'm, you see where I'm going, and that's what you find. I'm not here to pick on no religions. If you love religions, hey, best endeavors to you, and I'm happy for you. But if truly you want to have any kind of abundance of a life, you got to get back to source, secret sauce, man. That's key. So you must listen to the Kohanim. That's a must. And Brukashim, for this age that we're in right now, is that we have a Kohen, a son of Aaron, in, our, in, in this room right now. In this room. You see, he's not going to be popular. Many people are not going to like him. But does he care? I, I can tell you right now, I'm going to speak for the Kohen. He does not care. He's not here to be popular. He's not here to get likes. That's not why he's here. <laughs> Believe you me. And if I miss and if I miss talk for y'all Cohen, please let me know. But I'm just letting you know. After being with this man for a long time, I'm telling you, he's not here for none of that. His motivation and his purpose is to teach you how to live right. Not righteous, but to live a right standing life with the creator. Source energy. Source power. That's all. That's all. And it's really not difficult. But if you come from a religious background, it can almost be so difficult because it's so simple. Religions want to make things so complicated, Judaism included. Tell you, keep the Passover with. I tell you, I had the most beautiful Passover. I would like some of y'all's, you know, uh, some of y'all's uh, testimonies on your Passover. I bet you it was a beautiful Passover you had, right? So simple, and you're not here trying to, you know, duck and dodge this, got to get this, got to light this candle this time, blah, blah, blah. You got to make sure this is done this time. You got to set up this tray, have this on there, and oh my goodness. How I many of you had the most beautiful Pesach book, beautiful Passover meal ever? I tell you, it was so beautiful. So beautiful. And I got my family around me. My goodness, it was great. We're all here under one house, one base. Beautiful thing. But if you're in Judaism, you're jumping through hoops. You're sweating bullets, trying to get this. You got to do this at this time. Make sure this is done this way. Blah, 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 blah. You're going to stay up all night long. <laughs> I'm telling you. How many of you remember them days? I do. I put up a one that. I remember them days. Oh, you stayed up all night long. Oh, you try to stay awake. You done drank about eight glasses of wine, and you're about to fall asleep, and you're trying to go and read through the school. <laughs> I'm telling you. 
the Hadad that you read through, man, and, and you're so worn out. You're so beat down, and you're like, wow, this was really an awesome Shabbat. <laughs> you tell yourself that, but you're like, man, you tell your inner man is telling you, hold up, wait a minute. It's not, I'm pretty sure it wasn't that way for, for, for the Hebrews. It wasn't that way. I'm pretty sure it was a lot more simpler than what it was. And again, as you heard from the Kohen, it sure was. A lot more simpler. A lot more easy. But it's that human side of our being that we come in and we muck up things and we make things so difficult and we make things more difficult than they really are. Remember, we need to take the time and slow things down. Slow them down. If you have questions, you go to the Kohen. That's who you, that's source. That's going to the source. Well, no, Rabbi, I'm going to wait to hear from God. Oh, wait. Well, you're going to be waiting and waiting and waiting. Because at the end of the day, God doesn't talk to you. I can guarantee you for 99.9% .9 of you, it's that inner man that talked to you and told you. You see, you need to develop that relationship with the inner man that's within you, the I am within you, because that's the one that's guiding you and giving you instruction. The Imhokma, I call her the Imhokma, Mother Wisdom. She'll come to me, she'll speak to me in such a way, and I'll understand it. And it's a quiet, still voice, it's very quiet. It's not, oh, and the heavens opened up, and came coming down was this army of chariots of fire, and blowing off all of these smoke and fire, and everything became dark. And he came to my door, and he said, Kiva, behold, I am here. Man, come on, man. That's what Hollywood want to tell you. But no, it's going to be that still, small voice with inside of you. The majority of the time, it's going to give you that direction, that instruction that you need. As you meditate, as you envision, as you think, as you visualize, as you imagine how you are going to be now, you begin to change your whole script. You know, you all know about writing your scripts. Write your script. I can't write your script for you. You have to write your script. And however you write your script, I appreciate it and I respect it. Just because you don't write your script the same way I write my script, because that's what religions tell you. We have to write our script the same way. We have to do all, everybody have to do things this way, blah, 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 blah. What gives you that love, what gives you that peace, what gives you that joy at the end of the day, what makes you happy at the end of the day, that's meeting your mark. Sin has been so misconstrued. It's been, sin has put many people in fear. Think about it. Many people are fearing God because of sin. Think about this for a minute. Many sincere people that just want to serve the Creator, they call it God, Lord, I don't care what they call it, it doesn't matter. But they can't get on with God because they've been so hoodwinked by sin. Oh, you're a sinner, brother. I think somebody had, somebody stated that earlier. Oh, we're all sinners. I read that. I was like, my goodness. I didn't even want to entertain that thought. I'm busy over here trying to meet the mark. Not worried about me, me falling short. Oh, you're a sinner. Sinner, sinner, sinner. Sinner, sinner, chicken dinner. I don't have time for that foolishness. <laughs> The sort of error taught me how we need to we need to meet our mark, make your mark, meet your mark, go out and do what you what makes you happy. Reel it in, Rabbi Zakaria, fisherman of men. Reel them in. Manifest your desires. Call them in. Attract them into you. That that's how it happens. Jesus. The Master, Yeshua, Jesus of Nazareth. Did he go knocking on people's doors and say, uh, excuse me, I'm here. Uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is Messiah. I came. I'm here. I'm going to be here at this hall at this time. You can come over here and join me. No, didn't, did he, people were just attracted to him. And that's how it's going to be for you as well. You don't have to go out here and save the world. You don't have to put on the super Hebrew cake. You don't have to do that. People will be attracted to you. And the majority of the time when they come to you, they're going to say, man, there's something different about you. I've been watching you. You have such a peace about you. You see, these are the people. You see, what we have to be careful of, <laughs> this is so important, what we have to be careful of is 
putting on that super heat from K and being a bad representation to source energy, source power. Because we feel like we have to go around and tell everybody they're doing wrong. When we, that's not, that's not uh, my remit. That's not your remit to go around and tell nobody they're doing what they're doing is wrong. Stop it. That's not your remit. Shabbat shalom to you, Simcha. Telling everybody that they're sinners and they're going to, that's not your, that's not your remit. You to live your life and you to live it in abundance. And believe me, the universe is, your universe is going to attract people to you that you will affect. How be it for positive energy? That's what, that's, that's my script that I'm writing. My desire is that all of you bring positive energy and you touch everybody around you in a positive way. If that's giving them a smile, giving them a hug, giving them a good greeting, giving them a kind word, I don't care what it is, but positive energy. You don't have to go to them and give them the third degree about the Bible. They don't want to hear that. They have beliefs about the Bible. And if they're not connected to source energy, 99.9% of the time it's going to be wrong. Their interpretation of how they perceive and understand Hebrew history, Hebrew way of life, they don't know it. But they pull from it. Oh, these words sound good. I'm going to use this. But here's the question. What kind of source, what kind of power does those words have when you're not connected to the source? Think about it. I can sit here and turn this lamp on all day long and wonder why the light's not coming on. It's because I'm not connected to the power source. That's how majority of people are running around here today. So-called Bible believers, so-called believers in God. And why is this? I ask myself this all the time. It's because they're not connected to the source. Yeah, they'll give me some, and then they, 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 I tell you, they're dressing up real nice with their understanding about how they see the Bible. But if you're not affiliated with the Hebrews and understand their history, then you have no clue about the Bible. Really, at the end of the day, you have no clue about how to get on. You have no, think about it, you don't. But you're trying, you're ignorantly trying to understand something that you don't understand. You understand? <laughs> but that's what's happening. And I'm sitting here and I'm scratching my head. And I'm sitting here scratching my head like, wow, what do I say? And do you know what my inner man says? Don't say nothing. You don't say nothing. You allow them to continue doing what they're doing. Because the more I say is not going to help them. Maybe, and I tell you what, and some of you may have been there, super Hebrews at one time. The more you say, it actually bolsters their stance. How I many of you know what I'm talking about? The more you, 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 you give them some facts on the ground, the more it seems to em, em, embolden their stance. How many of you know what I mean? To where, my goodness... It's like before you had a, a molehill, now you have a full-fledged mountain up against you. When it's best just not to say anything at all. When it's best just to be quiet and let them be. Because they're not at that point to where they're ready to receive. And the worst thing you can do, right, is have a rejection of source energy because you told somebody something that they weren't ready to receive just yet and they rejected it. How, how, do, you, how do you help their judgment? Oh, yeah, think about this. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, but so-and-so told you about me and you rejected me. Oh, no, no, see, you don't want to do that. Best you leave them in ignorance, and I mean that in a good way. Leave, leave them without understanding until they're ready to get to the point to understand. Why are you forcing understanding on people? Stop. This is wrong. You all have your beliefs. But the question is, and hey, I respect every one of your beliefs. I respect every, I'm not going to shoot down any of your beliefs. But at the end of the day, my thing is, is it connected to the source power? You see? Are you connected to source energy? Do your beliefs line up with that very Bible that you believe in? The Master Yeshua, Jesus of Nazareth, said it several times. What does the laws of Moses say? Because that's what he believed in. The laws of Moses. What do they say? You're talking about Torah man here. When the master walked the earth, he was a man of the Torah. 
He wasn't a man of the Michigan. <laughs> he was a man of the Torah. He wasn't a man of the Talmud. And I'm collecting those right now too. But he was a man of the Torah. He didn't say, well, what does the rabbi say? Let's take a consensus. What opinion is most popular? And that's what we're going to roll with. No. He says, what does the laws of Moses say? That's what we do. You don't understand the laws of Moses? Then you have to go to the sons of Aaron. They will help you understand the laws of Moses and tell you exactly what you need to do for 2019. Because how many of you in this room are riding on a camel? Anybody? How many of you in this room own a donkey? Anybody? We're planes, trains, automobiles, and robots. Driverless cars. Come on, man. We're planes, trains, automobiles, robots, and driverless cars. We need understanding on how we need... And internet, by the way, which most folks are telling you today is up. Turn off your internet. You're breaking the commandments on Shabbat because you're on the internet. You're going to hell, blah, 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 blah. Again, misconstrued understandings is out there. When some, I, I can guarantee you, a majority of you in this room and those of you who are going to be listening to MP3, this message is going to be so enlightening to you and so helpful to you and give you such a peace and may, may, may even aid you in your way to bring you back to source energy. That's what it's about. And if the internet is a facilitator for that, I say, Baruch Hashem. I give thanks to the Master Yahweh. I give thanks to source energy. I give thanks to, for technology. I say, thank you, thank you, thank you. That's what's important. See, too much negativity, too much separation is in this world, man. Why we, again, you as the light bearers, you need to be open arms. Right? Not closed fisted and closing your doors because somebody doesn't keep the Passover. And not closed fisted and want to punch somebody because they offered you a pork chop sandwich and they know you're Jewish. <laughs> they know you don't eat pork. And that pork is not permit permissible food for you, but they offered you one anyway. So you're very angry. Oh, stop it. Stop the hate, man. Stop trying to find fault with others and look at and and find what's good in them. Find the goodness in them and grow that, nurture that, grow it. And then you'll find that all that negativity will be pushed out of the way. But you don't need to add more negativity to this world. God knows we don't need that in this world. So when we look at atonement, let's get into the Parsha for a little bit because I think it's important because Parsha, again, brings out these same points that I'm talking about. It's Israel, you got to go to the Kohanim. Hebrews, you got to go to the Kohanim. you got to go to the priesthood, the priest of Israel. Find one in your gate. Go to one. You have one in your gate now. We're very fortunate. We're truly blessed to have the sons of Aaron, the us son of Aaron on our shores here in North America. Question is why? There must be some outstanding people here in North America for him to come here. I mean, think about this for a minute. For him to be here in North America? Wow! Out of all the places that the God of Israel could place him, he brought him here to North America. He was in the UK for a while. He left the UK, and you see where the UK is. Brexit, exit, uh, uh, <laughs> Perplexed it. <laughs> I'm going to tell you all kind of accident works. I don't know what's going on in the UK, but they'll sort themselves out. And they'll be fine. But now he, he's here in North America and has been here for several years. Who is this? This is Rabbi Simon Altep. He's a Kohen guy. He's, he's a son of Aaron. Zadok. He's a priest, a Levitical priest, not, not, not priest from Rome. We're on, a, we're on a total different level here. Because Rome, too, will tell you. Rome, they have their own Bible as well. They have their own Bible, but I guarantee you, and their Bible, <coughs> and their Bible as well, and they have they they do they have a lot of of, of the Hebrew uh, history in there as well that they have uh, taken and adapted and, uh, and have embraced as their own. I don't knock that. Judaism has done it. The Catholics have done it. The Christians have done it. The Muslims have done it. All these religions have done it. 
That's, that's telling you something awesome about you. So you super, you super Hebrews. You, 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 you family of Jacob. Source energy, source power. You see, that's one thing that's constant in all these religions is that they pull from the Hebrew Bible and they adapt some things, discard some others. But that's okay. We'll leave them to it. Because at the end of the day, they're still going to be confused because they, they don't have full understanding. They're not connected to source energy, source power. We have to look at these things. We're dealing with birth, and I just so have to be dealing with that in my neck of the woods. Because, yeah, I give thanks to the Creator for birth, giving birth. Birth is multiplying. And some of you, majority of you probably in this room, have already fulfilled that side of it, is that you multiplied the earth, haven't you? <laughs> you gave, you've given birth. That's a beautiful thing. Great responsibility, not a burden. Birth is a blessing, right? It's not a burden. It seems like later on that all oh, I hear these moms in the grocery store. You was an accident. You should have never been born. How many of you heard that before? You was an accident. I didn't plan to have you. Wow. That's truly uplifting. That's positive energy, right? To top of that, yeah, you mess you up. But we're dealing with birth here as we get into our parsha, as we get into our history. You see, many people are not going to understand this history. They're not going to understand it. They'll read over this part. Oh, this don't pertain to me. See, that's picking and choosing. And you wonder why you can't start plumbing leak. Duct tape won't do it. <clears throat> you got to go back to source energy and you got to replace. You got to reboot. <laughs> Totally got to reboot. You got to replace what's already been, you know, put in there in place. It's, it's got to change. Two greatest things that you have to do in your life. Two greatest recommendations that I'm going to give you this day. Number one is you have to ask yourself, who are you listening to? That's going to be key. You're listening to somebody. Even if it's your own self, you're listening to somebody. Who do you listen to? And then the second one is... Is, is, is am I willing to accept change? Because unless you're willing to accept change, you know, nothing's going to happen in your life that's different. You're going to play the same old record, that same old LP, with the scratches on it at that same part in the song and everything. Two most important questions. How many of you in this room had to go through some change? When you came back to Source Energy, however you knew, maybe you called him God, put up a capital C if that's you. You came through, you came back to God, you were seeking out God, and, you know, you had to change some things. Some things had to change. Change don't happen overnight. To double your responses, by the way. Change don't happen overnight, right? But you realize you do need to change. Now, here's another question I have for you. When do you stop changing? Do you get to a point to where you plateau and you quit changing? Anybody? anybody? When do you stop changing? See, it's always going to be an evolution to top of that, Rabbi Dakar. Rabbi Dakar said, never. You never stop changing. It's an it's a evolution. It's a, it's a process. I mean, we're trying to get back to default settings, pre-guard settings, man. You see? So there's always going to be some faculty, some facility in our life that needs to change. Change is good. President Obama ran on that, and he won the presidency here in North America, right? He ran on change. And everybody, everybody embraced that. A black man, he ran on change and he got elected as president, running on change. I'm not talking about the change in your pocket either. But I'm talking about like change. Change is innate within human beings to want to change. You know what's not innate? Is to not change. But you see, religions will tell you don't change. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Oh, no, no, no. We just have to keep doing this very same thing. You don't have to change nothing. Just continue to do this, blah, 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 blah. You don't need to change. Just do this, and we're going to wait for, for redemption, because redemption is nigh. Oh, and we're waiting for redemption. We don't need to change nothing. We should go wait. Well, see, and then, and then when Yeshua, when Jesus come back, he's going to do all the changing. Oh, man. <laughs> That's, you don't want to be on that boat. <laughs> you, you don't want to be riding that boat of no change. Because you're going to live just like a, a shell of a life. Your life is going to be nothing, that's really. You're never going to be able to get on with that because you, you, you paralyze yourself. 
And this is one of the greatest attributes of religion, is it paralyzes you. It puts you in a, a paralysis. And the investment side of things, we call it analysis paralysis. Sometimes you can analy analyze a pair, a currency, for so long. You analyze it, analyze it, analyze it, and you know the move is going to happen with, because you analyzed it so well. But you never take the trade. And then the trade happens, and it went just as you analyzed it. But you never took the trade because you paralyzed with the analyzing, and you never went in and took the trade and made the money on that particular currency pair. Isn't that what they call it, Akoheen? Analysis paralysis. And many people do that. And they do they do it with their spiritual life as well. They do it in religion. You just analyze, analyze, oh, this, this, this. But you never take any action on it. And what happens to you? You never move. You paralyze yourself. You never take any action. Because you're too busy trying to analyze. You're too busy trying to get the knowledge, 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 wisdom, wisdom. Oh, Rabbi, I'm trying to understand. I'm trying to understand. I'm trying to understand that you never get on with it. You paralyze yourself. Judaism is the biggest. How many of you have the Talmud in your house? Try reading through all of that mumbo jumbo. Oh, this Rabbi said this on this, and Rabbi Akiva said this, and this and this. All this analysis that it paralyzes you. And you cannot get on because you analyze it. Well, which rabbi was right? Well, the consensus has it that this rabbi was saying this and, and blah, 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 and blah. And, and you can't get on. You do not want to paralyze yourselves, Mishpaha. Paralysis is doing you no good. Paralysis is not giving you an abundance of a life, you see. It's not giving you a abundance of any kind of life when you paralyze yourself. The Master Yeshua, Jesus of Nazareth, Moses, you look at all of our great patriarchs and matriarchs as well. Paralysis was not one of their attributes. <laughs> they were always moving, always willing to change, always willing to accept change. You see, you may be willing to change, but are you willing to accept the change? That's a big difference. Yeah, Rabbi, I know I need to change in my life. I know I need to make some changes, but are you willing to accept that? It's different. That acceptance doesn't come without, it comes within. And it may take a while for you to get to that point. You, you realize everything that I've been taught my whole life was a lie. I, my whole life has been, been, been based on a ball of emotions. Everything I'm, can you, I'm telling you, it, it, it was it was quite refreshing for me to realize that, that everything that I had been taught in my life was a lie. I was like, wow, well, there's my answer to the quest, all the questions that I had. Okay, now let's delete all that foolishness, right, and let's reset. Let's reboot now. You see? Now, for some that may take a while to get there. But once you get there, my goodness, and then you can connect the source energy, because you do have the DNA of El Shaddai. You have the DNA of El Shaddai. Quit, quit running after uh, this, 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 oh, a family tree, this, that, the other, and the third. You're connected. You don't need to run no tests and send some money for a test that you're connected to the source energy of the DNA of El Shaddai. Book of Shem. You don't have to go to family tree for that. Pay the money online. Send a swab or your saliva. No. Mishpaha. Now. You are connected to the DNA of El Shaddai. Beautiful, isn't it? Isn't that beautiful? I'm telling you, that's beautiful. I'm not, I'm not one for the emotion type thing, but I tell you, give me goosebumps, man. When you say those words, I have the DNA of El Shaddai. Man. That makes you see your, your little so-called problem as nothing. It's nothingness, man. You're connected to the, to the divine source, to the infinite source, connected to the power of all things. You are greatness. You are great. But it may take a while for you to see yourself that way. Others can tell you that until the cows come home. But what does, it doesn't do anything until you begin to see yourself that way. 
Because you've been beat upside the head and told that you're a sinner, sinner, chicken dinner. Sinner, sinner, sinner. You're going to sin today, you're going to sin tomorrow, you're going to be a sinner. And you're going to go to hell. Fire and brimstone, that's all a, a, a hogwash, man. They're playing on your fear. They're trying to keep you in fear. Diminishing your faith by keeping you in fear. You got to go back to the default settings, man. You got to get back to bare sheet to the book of Genesis. We're not created in the images of in the images of what God just to do what to to be fearful people. God forbid. But to live upstanding, right life, to be in right standing with source power, with source energy. How do you be in right standing with source energy? Well, you better be putting out positive energy. But that's hard for me to do. It starts within. Then it becomes easy. You know what makes it difficult? Most people don't want to deal with themselves. They want to deal with everything outside of themselves. That's the biggest problem, Mishpaha. They want to go look for it in a, pe a preacher, a pastor, a, a woman, a man. Uh, uh, they, they, they look for it in all these other things outside of themselves. And this is why. <laughs> they, 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 they don't go to the source. Source is within self. It's your I am. I am that I am. What are you saying about your I am? I am weak? I am sick? I am depressed? Think about this. This is just what's going on. And this is just what's manifesting in your life. I am health. I am wealth. I am prosperity. I am peace. I am love. I am joy. You see? You see the difference? And all of this, man, is going out into, you see, it's, 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 it's deeper than just words, man, when you start to look at the other side. You begin to look at the subconscious. You see, a lot of people are conscious. Uh, they're, they're, they're unconscious, but they're, 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 they're alive, but they're unconscious. They're like zombies, man. Just like zombies. We don't want to be zombies. We want to be conscious. But again, you must begin to clean up and open up your subconscious, man. You got to come out of your mind. You gotta come out of it. And then they drag it. <laughs> you actually gotta become a shrink for yourself. Begin to examine your mind. Begin to examine your situation. Begin to witness it. Say, okay, this is, why am I doing this? What's making me think this way right now? Why, why, why am I doing this? You see, you gotta come outside of your mind. Too long we've been mind controlled. The mind is just a tool. The mind was never made to inhabit us and totally take over, take control. But over time, we have allowed the mind, we've been conditioning to allow the mind to dictate things. Use the mind as a wonderful tool that it is. It's just, it's a, it's a wonderful tool. It's a great tool to have. We just been, it's been misplaced. Well, Rabbi, you talking about that new age mumbo jumbo? No, I'm talking about life. You can pull whatever time. I'm talking about how living a life and living a life more abundantly. This is all biblical. But religious told you it's not. It's all biblical. Man thinks so he is. <laughs> that, that, that's biblical, man. Thinking you will be. The master Yeshua, what he would ask people? What do you want? What do you want? What is your will? You was not forcing nothing on nobody. People come to me, I want to be healed. My will, I want to be healed. That's what I want. That's why I want to ask you this day, what do you want? That's meeting the mark. You know what sin is? Just like the Kohen taught us. Time and time again, we need to hear this because we've been conditioned for a very long time. And sin is, is just, it, it, it's, 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 oh, you, you're desiring something. Oh, you're sinning, brother. Oh, because you desire you're, you're lusting, brother, but you're sinning. You're going to hell. Sin is just missing your mark. Not meeting your desires, your wants, your, your, your dreams. That's what sin is, man.
But again, we've been told, <laughs> I tell you, you want to go down that wormhole, you can go right down that, worm, that wormhole, the rabbit hole, all the different holes. And it's, it's endless. When you could be living on the other side of unlimited, infinite abundance. Not finite, it's infinite. Doesn't stop. Just like we don't stop changing. We don't stop in our evolution of growth, of development, of experience. And what's the meter to judge all of these things? Well, then you're going to have to be put up against some kind of situation. Some kind of new experience. To see spirit permit. To see exactly where you are. And what you need to fine tune. And what you do need to make those changes a little bit. Do a little tweaking here, tweaking there. And then more will be given to you. And then you'll begin to have more experiences. And then you do a little more changing here, tweaking there. And it's an evolution where you never stop changing. You're, you're developing continued growth with the goal of always bringing you back to the what? Divine source. Because that's where you want to be. That's where you want to have it. And you can. But you got to get in the subconscious, man. And you got to get out of your mind. Because your mind going to tell you, this is a bunch of foolishness. It's a bunch of hogwash. My pastor said, y'all going to hell. You guys are sinners. You don't know what you're talking about. Where Show me in the Bible where it says that. Oh, that's the first. Oh, show me in the Bible where it says that. The Bible doesn't say it. The Bible just lives it. The Bible does. You see? Christians have that down to the T. What did Jesus do? They don't say, well, what did Jesus say? What did Jesus do? What did the Master Yeshua what did he do? How did he treat those that were lesser than him? How did he treat those that came to him? What was his political affiliation? Yeah, no, he loved all. He wanted peace for all. He wanted to show loving kindness to all people, and he did. So what's happening? What happened to us today? <laughs> what happened? To all of these so-called Bible believers out there. Well, where are you at? And again, do you know where they went wrong? And, you know, I, my, my heart truly goes out to these people because these are sincere people that want to serve God. But you know where they messed up? You know where their fatal flaw is? Who do you listen to? And they'll tell you who they listen to. When you sit there and just listen to them. My pastor said, who do you listen to? Who do you listen to? Well, my pastor said, I don't have to have the willingness to change. I don't have to, have to, I don't have to be able to accept change because it, 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 we, we, we live in a new dispensation and, and this is all new and, and we, can, we have grace and blah, 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 blah. So you leave them to it. I tell them best endeavor to you. Enjoy your relationship with the creator of the heavens and the universes. Enjoy it as you know it and as you understand it. But again, it goes back to the point of who you listen to. And we're told here in our books, it's very important that you not you, you got you to listen to them, but then you, you have to act upon the listening. It's just not, oh, you just listen. Oh, that sounds good. Rabbi gave me some goosebumps. I even shed a few tears. And then you just go on and just doing your own little, little, little merry old thing that you've been doing. And there's no change in your life. Basically, you, you that's analysis paralysis as well. Because you're just paralyzing yourself because you never move. You never take action. Upon what you're hearing. And kudos to the religions out there because they do everything the pastor says. They'll follow pastor to the team. Pastor go jump off the bridge, they jump off the bridge with the pastor. They got that part down, man. I guess that's part of that brainwashing. And truly, when the blind lead the blind, the master Yeshua tells us what? That both of them end up wearing ditch. It's not a good place to be, is it? So we look at Leviticus. We look at Leviticus chapter 12. We, we, we're back to the birth factor. But the, the, the key point I want to look at here, and I want to keep, I'm, I'm going to just touch on little, little points in this parsha, little verses, 
I'm going to start with uh, Leviticus chapter chapter 12. Look at verse 8. And, she, and, 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 and if she be not able to bring a lamb, then she shall bring two turtle doves, two young pigeons, uh, one for a burnt offering and the other for a sin offering. And listen to this. Here's the, here's the key. And, 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 and the Kohen and the priest shall make atonement for her, and she shall be clean. Who makes the atonement? The priest. Birth. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing to bring forth life. Be co-creators with source energy. And the Kohen shall make atonement for her. Can anybody else atone for her? Can the husband atone for her? Well, the, the husband's a Kohen. That'd be the only, only, only way there. Again, we have to go back to what? This is Hebrew history. This is Israel's history. The Bible is Israel's history. Remember that. And the Kohen shall make atonement for her, and she shall be clean. When shall she be clean? When the Kohen makes atonement for her. What if the Kohen never makes atonement for her? Then she, she's not clean. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, we have to look at this. We must examine this point. We talk about being connected to the source energy. To source energy. To the power, right? Now, I talked about this earlier. There's different power levels. When you put a meter on there, some people are more connected than others, right? And there's, there's a different, there's, you know, there's different levels to power that we can have. Well, I guess we can talk more on the amperage or the voltage of our connection, okay? Let's talk more on that area. Now, Let's imagine this for a minute. Say the woman, she does give birth, blah, blah, blah. She does what she needs to do. But she decides, she talks to Harry, her husband. Your name's Harry, no offense. I think it's a cool name. If she, if, if she, if she goes to Harry and says, well, Harry, uh, I don't think, I don't think we need to do this. To me, uh, I don't think we need to make this up because, you know, Harry, we got about buy pamphlets. You know, formula is expensive. And we can, we can save that money that we're going to use on these birds and, and use that to get some pampers and stuff like that. Um... How connected do you think she is to source energy? Opposed to another situation, we got Samantha over here, and, and, and she's talking to her husband, Sam. She says, Sam, you better take care of that. You know, we don't have this baby. You know, we got to follow the law. You know, we got to follow our, our, our way of life. And in, in our heritage, in our way of living, when we bring forth life, then we have to go, you make sure you go to the priest. So he can make atonement for me, so I can be clean again, ritually. Now, we talk about, see, a lot of folks, I'll tell you, there's a lot of these Hebrews out here on YouTube, is that they take this stuff and they, they act, they take this stuff. How many of you love your wife? <laughs> How many of you truly love your wife? You truly love her and you, you want the best for her and you desire only good things and you want to give her the best and you want her to be happy and you want her to be you know, just, you know, she, you, you want to treat her like the queen that she is. How many of you, and, and I see this on YouTube, because they misunderstand our, our, our history and our, 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 our process and procedure, is that they'll say, oh, you unclean. Get away from me. Don't touch me. You know how they do? You know, how many of you are guilty of this as well? Oh, don't touch me. You unclean. You can't touch me. And they make it almost seem like these women are like, like lesser than a woman and almost like they nasty and they dirty and they can't be touched. I want to hone in on this point. This just means that they're ritually unclean. Ritually unclean. Not that you can't go and hug your wife. Oh, I can't hug you now, honey. Well, your wife may be at a, you know, after they have a baby, you know, sometimes they go through postpartum depression. How many of you know about that? And then maybe sometimes they just need a hug or a kiss or just a consolement in some kind of way. But yet these men are saying, husbands, oh no, no, baby. You can't, you unclean, I can't touch you, you nasty, you dirty, blah, 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 blah. That is a way you do not want to be. Because right here in our, in our, in our books, this is talking about, you know, making her ritually clean again to where her meter, her amperage, the, the voltage, not only for her, but for that household as well, will be at peak and not at medium or not at low. You see what we're talking about here? Being ritually unclean. I call you just did many lectures on this. 
being ritually unclean. I don't mean, oh, you condemned and you you're 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 going to hell because you didn't get this done. That just means when you when you when you don't get this done that you can create a lot more problems not only for yourself but for other families down your lineage line to come because you haven't dealt with this matter accordingly. You see, this is what you have to be careful of with all these religions as they begin to adapt they begin to take on some of the Hebrew way of living. Is that they'll find themselves, that they open up themselves to a, a lot of trouble, almost like Pandora's box. They open up themselves to a lot of troubles because they're enacting laws and principles that has repercussions to them. I couldn't talk about this. And you can repent all you want, but then there, there must be some restitution in there as well. You see, religions talk about repent, 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 but they don't talk about restitution. You make a mistake, yeah, you repent for the mistake, but then, that must, then you must go and correct the mistake, you see. Another one of our high festival days is the festival of Yom Kippur. What happens at Yom Kippur, Ms. Bob? Anybody tell me? Pastor Yeshua talked about this in, in, in parable form. When he talked about when you go to bring your gift, and if you have wronged someone, you leave your gift at the altar, you go make it right with that person first, then you come back and bring your gift. You see, so the purpose is the rhyme and reason is this is that we always want to be in right standing with the with 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 you know, horizontally. Too many times we focus on being right standing vertically that we forget about horizontally. That means your neighbor, person around you. Second of all, the greatest commandments is what? Is to love your neighbor as you love yourself. So we must be able to get on with people that are human beings just like we are, connected just like you and I are connected to source energy. Because at the end of the day, no matter what your religious affiliation is, you have the DNA of El Shaddai. Whether you want to believe it or not, that's just facts on the ground. You weren't animated by a bomb, by a big bang. You have the DNA of El Shaddai. And I think if more people see other human beings in that aspect, I think there'll be a higher respect value towards one another instead of all this hatred and all this other mumbo-jumbo that we see occurring in the world, around the world, just based upon affiliation or name or denomination or whatever they want to put on it. So I, I wanted to kind of hit on that point a little bit about this being ritually unclean. Because some people take that to the extremes and say, oh, you're a Gentile. I cannot shake your hand because you eat pork. That's crazy. That's ridiculous. That's asinine. Don't be that kind of individual. Oh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, I can't talk. Matter of fact, I can't eat at any table with you because you, you, you eat foods that are not permitted. You understand where we're going with this? So you must be very careful of that. And that gets closer to home as we deal with, you know, your, 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 your wife doing their monthly flow separation and all this, that, and the other. Ritually unclean. So you, you get to the point, right, to where you, you have to decide, okay, am I all the way in this or I'm just part ways? Am I 100% in? Or am I like 50%, 75%? Because what will happen is, is the same results will, you, will be seen, you will see manifested in your life, physically. This is why it's key now for us to build our spirit man uh, up. But understanding building your physical man up, the spiritual man up, you have to build up your physical man as well, accordingly. And so we must do things the right way, according to our law, and according to what we're told. And if you have problems with the law, then you go to the Kohen. 
the son of Aaron, he'll help you. This is where you get atonement. Atonement comes from who? The sons of Aaron. Right? The, 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 the Kohanim, that's where it comes from. <clears throat> so today in his lecture, what you got was a cleanup. Okay, now I need to clean up this area. This is another little area. See, a more change is coming. Are you willing to accept this change? But truly, not only fix yourself, you see, because what you all have to understand is I can guarantee you probably 99% of you are the first generation that, that has come back. You're Israel coming back. You're Israel awakened. So now for future generations, if the Master Yeshua so desires to linger, future generations, you, you, you're, making, you're, you're making their lives so much better. For the betterment of your future generations. That's what you're doing. If you so decide to do so. Because some folks may still be on the fence. And your mind may be telling you all kind of mumbo jumbo. Oh, Rabbi, right that's too much money. I, I got to pay these bills. Blah, 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 blah. And blah, 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 blah. But at the end of the day, you have to ask yourself this. How connected am I to the source? To the source? Is it just a mere words? Or, or is it with my deeds? My actions on the ground? Do they dictate how I am connected? And then we go into verse 13, as I coin talked about, dealing with the leprosy side of things. And again, look at uh, chapter 13 of Leviticus, verse 3. And the coin shall look upon the sores of the skin of the flesh. Who shall look upon the sores of the skin of the flesh? And the coin. There you have it again. See, the Kohanim are for our physical lives, not for this by and by mumbo jumbo. It's the physical life that we're concerned about here. The giving of birth was example number one in this parsha. The Kohen has his hand in it. You tell me any area of the Hebrew's life that the Kohen didn't have his hand in. Hand in marriage, hand in death. The Kohen has his hand in every situation. Hand in life, hand in birth. <laughs> And in circumcision, every area, facet. And in atonement, and in, you know, the atonement, I mean, my goodness. Every one of our high holy days, and in every area of your life, the Kohen is connected. Should be. That is your connection, actually. That is my connection, actually. Right? But the Kohen has been bypassed. And now everybody wants to make a direct vertical connection with God. Which is just not, it's not feasible. The connection has to be parallel with the Kohen. Then the Kohen can go vertical to source energy, source power, to the divine presence. Do you understand that? This is why you don't come to your festivals at the end. This is why we do all of these necessary. We always take care of our Kohen in the gate. Never forsake the Kohen in the gate. Never, never, never do that, Mishpah. See, but everybody that says they believe in the Bible, they, 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 they hear and, and they, they want to pull things from the Bible. But they don't want to totally connect to source. But they'll use the Kohen like a, let's just say, like a answering box where you go in, you put some, you know, you, you, you dial the number and you, you get an answer to your question. But here's the question. Getting an answer to the question, will it fix their so-called problem just because you got the answer? if you're not connected to source energy. This is why we see time and time again is that people come back with the same questions or yeah, they get the answer to their question but the question, the problem is never fixed in their life. And they sit there blaming God but it's not God, it's the problem, it's them because they didn't connect to source energy. They're not connected. Yes, they got the answer to their question 
But is that how 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 far is that going to help them? And it brought me back to what I was talking about with the guy from Africa. Yes, he may have given him some. The guy asked, "Well, is this like foolproof or whatever?" And I'm paraphrasing, but like, is it going to work? Well, I going said in a roundabout way. Well, you know, are you Israel? Is it not? If you connect it to to, to the source. To source energy. So if if you're still affiliated with the religions, then how much of of this way of life is going to work for you? You know, you got to look at it that way. This is why it's it's, it's it's totally ridiculous for you to go out and try with the super Hebrew age and in, in, in the cave and go out here and try to save the world because they're not connected to source. And it's like you 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 know you're throwing pearls to literally you, you're throwing pearls to swine. You see what I mean? That's real. And hopefully I presented that in a way today where you really see, well, wow, that is detrimental. You know, I shouldn't be out here trying to, you know, condemn them and tell them that they're doing wrong, you see. I shouldn't do that. That's very wrong for me to do that. That's very wrong for me to look on a fellow human being and tell and make them lesser than, 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 than I. When I should be lesser than them, humble myself. Respect their opinions, respect their thoughts, respect their choices. Because at the end of the day, that's what it's all about, right? It's all about choice. And you can choose to do whatever you desire. Because that's meeting your mark. Because you're doing what you desire. You're doing what you want. Think about that for a minute. What do you want? Master, you sure? You can go to say, well, look, I'll raise him from the dead. No, they eat. What do you want? What do you want? I tell you, that's, that's, that's a great point. Well, you might be saying, well, I don't know what I don't. I, I don't know what I want, Rabbi. Well, then you need to take the time to figure out what you do want. And if you need help with that, again, Leviticus chapter 13, verse Three talks about, and the Kohen shall look upon the sores of the skin of the flesh. This is for the Kohen. <clears throat> and then look look again. Look at verse 5. And the Kohen shall look on him, on, on him the seventh day. Look at verse 6. And the Kohen shall look on him again on, on, the, on the seventh day. Look, do you see? Are you seeing a trend here? Look at verse 8 of chapter 13. And if the Kohen see that, you see the Kohen, the Kohen, the Kohen. At verse 10, and the Kohen shall see him. 11, and the Kohen shall pronounce him unclean. Look at 13, and the Kohen shall consider him. I'm, try, I'm drilling this in, baby, to subconscious. You need to understand the importance and the role of the Kohen and how important he really is. To our lives, our very existence, to infinite abundance, is the Kohen. And the Kohen shall consider again in verse 13, and verse 15, and the Kohen shall see the raw flesh and pronounce it to be unclean. It's the Kohen. Now, we're talking about a physical ailment here. We're talking about a physical ailment. But again, you can take this into the spiritual as well. How much more so if the Kohen is important for our physical side? Assist, consider, to look upon, to see. He needs to be involved in our lives at that capacity. That's the Kohen's role, Mishpah. That's his role. That's his place. This is the Torah for the plague of le leprosy. This is the Torah. If you say you're in Torah, then again, your connection to the Kohen must be key. Judaism tells you this is not true. You don't need the Kohanim. We got the rabbis. We got the great rabbis in the Talmud, in the Mishnah. No worries. No Kohen is required. 
I submit to you again, that's a bunch of the religious mumbo jumbo that's going to paralyze you. I have seen personally some good people, great people, beautiful people that have been hoodwinked and bamboozled by Judaism, and now they're paralyzed. They're like zombies and they cannot see. You can't you can't help them see see light because it, it, there's so much there's so much darkness piled around them and they don't they don't see the dark. They don't see it. They see all of this is just uh, that they're doing great things for God. And God is nowhere in that. They're just going through motions. Like robots. They're paralyzed, totally. And they refuse to change. Remember we talked about change? They refuse to change, Mishpaha. Refuse. They'll totally reject change. This is your Judaism for you. They'll totally refuse to accept that they need to change. Who do they listen to? Well, <laughs> that, that, that. Uh, need I say more on that one? Who do they listen to? Who are they? Are they listening to the Kohen? Does the Kohen see? Is the Kohen considering? This is the Torah. Yet they say Torah, Torah. They can oh, speak Hebrew. Oh, I want to learn to speak Hebrew. Torah, 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 Torah. Make beautiful songs, do all of the mumbo jumbo, but at the end of the day, Mishpah, what's behind it? Secret sauce? Source? Or just the TV dinner box? Just a beautiful image on the outside. Inside, food is nasty. Matter of fact, it's not even good for you. Not even nutritious. <laughs> TV dinners. Fill the tummy, though. We'll fill the tummy. Add some water, man, tummy bloated. And, you know, deal, deal with the hunger factor for a little while. But totally not good for you. Totally not good for you. But we must allow the Kohen to look upon, see our lives, look upon them, consider what needs to be done. That's his role. That's why he's here in North America to help all of us, to help you on YouTube as well. This is where we are. This is our history. And we let those people still continue to run in confusion because that's what it's going to be. They're going to run in confusion because they tried to pull from our books. Do you know, that I'm not trying to scare people, but when you begin to, you know, take on the covenant and you're not a part of the covenant, is that actually good for you? You the part about blessings and curses. you got to be careful with that. And we see this with these religions. This is why they have all kind of problems within their quote-unquote families. The Catholic family. The Christian family. You leave them to it. If that's the way they want to write their scripts, let them write their scripts that way. Because they're happy. If you're a happy Christian, I, I'm happy for you. <laughs> if you're a happy Baptist, I am happy for you. If you're a happy Pentecostal and you love wearing dresses, I'm so happy for you. You love not wearing makeup, I am super excited for you. I'm your biggest fan. I'm not going to condemn you and put you down. I'm not going to run you under the bus. Someone phoned into this, to us this week was talking about, well... This brother is having all kind of troubles with his wife. You know, his wife is an unbeliever and blah, blah, blah. I said the problem is not with his wife. The problem is with the man. The man is force-feeding Torah to this woman. And that's, that's breaking their marriage. Force-feeding it. Oh, you have to do things this blah, blah. And again, the woman's not having it. She's like, I'm not doing it that way. You don't love me. If you, I'm the king. I'm not, I'm not, you know you know what I'm talking You know this feel. She's an unbeliever in this. I'm like, my goodness, please, sir. Did you marry your wife because she was an unbeliever? Come on, man. Let me tell you something. This is what they're talking about. People make money. 
People make mistakes and then they blame the Bible. People make mistakes and then they use the Bible to beat upside. The, they use the Bible as as a weapon. And it's, the, it's not the Bible that's the problem. It's the people that made the mistake. But then they want to use the Bible to substitute the mistake. Oh, you're a sinner. You're going to hell. You don't believe in God. You're an unbeliever. Luxury class said it this way. People use the Bible to pass off the blame. That's a good way to put it. Well said, luxury class. And that's what happens. The Bible becomes a bully pulpit. And then one side has to be right in the Bible, the other side has to be right in the Bible, the other side maybe don't even believe in the Bible. So the question is, well, why did you marry this woman? Again, you see where we're going? If you're calling her unbeliever now, what, what was she when you married her? <laughs> you, you see my point? We got to get to the source, man. Maybe the source has nothing to do with the Bible, per se. Maybe there's other motives behind there. In each case, you have to judge it on a case-by-case -case basis. But you must go where you can find, you know, that, 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 that help me for you. You must go where you can find that. And you don't jump into it quickly. Because then there may be you two calling us and say, oh, he or she is an unbeliever. Blah, 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 blah. Well, why did you marry this woman? Why did you commit to this man? Why did you take this man as a cooperator, but now he's an unbeliever? You see? Well, when you find that right, I want to tell you it's, 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 it's another day in paradise. When you find that help me, truly. It's another day in paradise. It's a beautiful thing. But again, I'll say this in closing. Is the important thing is, is that sometimes you you must experience the bad so you can have a high appreciation for the good. And you'll be grateful for the good. And you'll give thanks for the good. Because why? You've experienced the bad. And you understand what bad really is. And so when you get good, you're, you're gracious and you're thankful, thankful every day. You're thankful every day. This is why you chalk up every experience as a good experience. Because in that, what you think is a bad experience is actually making you even more gracious for the good that's going to come out of it and will come out of it in yet future as you continue to write your scripts and continue to manifest and attract the desires and the wants of your heart and of your head. And that, that's a beautiful thing. So on that note, I'll wrap it up. But I mean, this 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 lecture today really is not nothing in my notes, again. But uh, it's just true, backing up for what the Kohen is talking about and but the importance of listening to the Kohen, taking the instruction and following through with it. Persistence is key. Persistence is golden. But, you know, the reason, uh, well, the majority of the reason why you will continue to have problems, Israel, is because you deviate <laughs> from instruction of a Kohen. And it goes back to those same two questions that I asked earlier. And these, these questions are paramount. And you need to teach them to your children and your children's children. Who do you listen to? And am I willing to accept change? Those two things right there. But you're going to really be a great aid to your children and your children's children. Why? It's because you have the opportunity to to put up that detour sign in their way that will prevent them from going down some bad paths. You're going to be able to correct the wrongs that have been passed on in generations. And indeed, it seems to be generational issues, right? That's what we're still dealing with today. We celebrate the Passover, festival of what? Festival of rescue. We're dealing with what? We're remembering what? <laughs> They've done bad in the past. 
must remember those to appreciate the sweetness of the good that we have now in the exile. How many of you believe the exile is, is truly beautiful and sweet? Anybody? How many of you have that belief? You say, yes, I believe the exile is beautiful. There's a beauty in the exile. The exile is beautiful. The exile is wonderful. The exile actually has, <laughs> you know, redemption built into it. Think about it. Not only of Israel, but for the whole of the world. As you are lights to the whole of the world. Do you see the beauty of the exile? The exile is very beautiful. When you look at it from that perspective. But again, who do you listen to? <laughs> you know, you get a lot of teachers that they tell you the exile is just a terrible time. It's terrible. It's horrible. It's away from the way we're used to living. I never lived in Israel before, so I know how our forefathers lived. I know the comforts of the exile, and they're beautiful. I haven't, I haven't lived in Israel, so I don't know what I'm, what I, what I'm missing. <laughs> you understand what I mean? <laughs> I know what I mean when I leave San Antonio, Texas, though. <laughs> I do know that in travels. I know what I'm missing there. But I do not know what I'm missing not living in Israel. Do you understand? I don't know. But yet people will try to give you this. Now, I went to Israel with the Kohen, and I tell you what, I wasn't I wasn't too pleased how, how things were going down. I was ready to get back to Texas. I didn't like what I was seeing about how people were living there. I didn't like that. Truly, there's division there in Israel. Class division. Separation. I mean, my goodness. Uh, yeah, believe me, there's no right ruling government in Israel today. It's a secular government. So, again, you know, I don't understand when they say, well, uh, the exile is bad, it's terrible. And, you know, I'm praying that we go to Israel uh, and, and we in Israel, blah, blah, blah. And, by the way, we're still getting calls of people that want information on how to relocate to Israel. Uh, they get crickets over here because I, I don't, I don't, what am I going to instruct them on how to get to Israel? I'm not trying to help people get to Israel for what? So they can go over there and live like a fourth-class citizen? Uh, No. Well, God is with me, brother. I'm going over there with God. Well, you're going to find out God is not with you. You see? You're <laughs> luxury class, and I didn't get to Israel on a plane. <laughs> That's a good answer, luxury class, for 500 on a plane. But, you know, I mean, my goodness. I mean, no, you guys, uh, see the beauty of the exile. See the beauty of the exile. It's beautiful. The exile is beautiful. <laughs> we have the opportunity to correct and, and mend our minds and correct ourselves and truly connect to our I am's. My goodness. Uh, uh, what is this? Wisdom Wisdom by prayer saying only 2.5% uh, of Israel today is Christian. Oh, wow. Uh, thank you for those numbers. So, again, I think it's important that we understand that. You know, it, well, Oh, the reasons why things happen to us in our lives. I would encourage you this day to look at the good, see the good. See the good in all things. See the good in all things. Because they're good in all things. And and, and go through your problems but understand that you're not going through them alone. And you don't, you know, uh, don't feel like you're alone or you're lonely. Because that's, that's not... <laughs> That's not DNA of El Shaddai, being alone and lonely. Yes, you're going to have these emotions, you human beings, but you need to snap yourself out of it. Let your I am tell your mind, no, we're not going there. I have the Kohen with me. <laughs> I'm never alone, you see. So these are things that we have to look at uh, as well. So, you know, enjoy your festival times. Don't forget not to come empty-handed to your festivals, to our high holy days. Remember when you're making your unleavened bread daily, <coughs> that you, you put some aside, buried in your backyard for the Kohen. Don't try to put it in the mail and mail it to him. By the time you get to him, it'll probably be molded and busted and disgusted. But, but bury it in your garden. Don't forget who you are. Don't forget how you're supposed to live. 
and truly live live the life and 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 and, and let your, your let your walk be your talk so we'll wrap it up we'll leave it up for any questions at this time if you have any i'm gonna turn the mic back over to hakohi uh but remember we got to connect to the source this, this source you know is we, we we've got to connect back to the source that's the key that will really eliminate a lot of the questions once you connect back to source energy, source power. Connect back to the source. We will do ourselves a great service. And we'll see you next Shabbat unless the Master Yeshua so desires to uh, bring us back into the land at that time. Till then, have a great six days of labor ahead. Enjoy this, you know, this month of Miracle Festival that we have before us, this Festival of Rescue. Um, truly remember and truly give thanks and blessings and praise and show gratitude for the exile and Mother Earth. And the same will be given back to you. Take heed if you missed in, you came in late, you may want to go back and uh, watch the video or listen to the recording, not so much watch the video because we don't record videos, but watch the, listen to the recording so you can get the understanding on karma. And I tell you, Gentiles know a lot about karma. They tell me that all the time. I know the friends that I hang around, they tell me all the time, man, that's just karma coming back on you. They know about it. They know of karma, but not how, no one talks about how to fix it. <laughs> you know, how do you, how do you change your situation? <laughs> you know, so again, book a share for the Kohen in the gate to give us great instruction and guidance and, and direction that's be beneficial to our lives. Over to you, our Kohen. You all have a wonderful Shabbat. Uh, Tudor for that, Rabbi Kiva. Yeah, great lecture, Tudor. Uh, okay, so uh, before, we're not going to close yet. I've got a testimony to share with you, but before we do that, I think it's very important that you get a few points uh, that needs to be understood. Uh, Hadassah is saying, help me understand how to observe the Passover with my family, please. Okay, Hadassah, the first thing you needed to do, uh, if, you, or, you know, if you're already doing the Passover, or if you're doing the Passover ahead, which is... Uh, which starts on uh, uh, 20th of this of this month uh, would be uh, and Jew, the, the the lunar cycle. Jewish people are going to start it on the on the on the night of that. By the way, which will be the 19th evening. We do not do that. As I said, that we never you know we do not do night days. We do day days. And you you probably missed the first part of the lecture. You may have to go back to the recording and listen to it because you if all of you come in late. You missed a very important part. First 20 minutes of the lecture, you will need to go back and listen to that because you missed a lot. Uh, very, very important information. So, the, the Passover, first thing first, you have to make sure that there's no leaven in your house. Leaven is yeast. Make sure that you don't have yeast products like bread, uh, other things that have yeast in them, not baking powder. Baking powder is not yeast. So, if you have yeast based products, then you need to give those to somebody else, maybe your neighbors, your your friends or whoever, you cannot have them in your house. And uh, after that, you need to then, uh, you know, your, your, if it's a male, part of Israel, they need to be circumcised. If they are not circumcised, they cannot observe the meal. That's a, that's a commandment, by the way. And uh, if you are or if you are not, if you are not circumcised, if you are a male, you can still observe it, but you will not be able to eat the lamb as a token. The lamb as a token could only be eaten if a person is circumcised. That is part of the covenant deal. It's called covenant, uh, covenant completion. If you uh, are circumcised, then you have you prepare a meal, a lamb meal, a lamb meal. A lamb has to be roasted. You can then add bitter herbs to it, which is usually horseradish, and there's none of the other stuff needs to be added other than leavened bread. It means tortilla type of bread, roti, has to be added to the meal. Nothing else needs to be added other than that, because the rest of it is all mumbo jumbo, gumbo dumbo. Don't need to add any of the other stuff. So that's all you need. That's what Torah commands. Everything else that the Jews do today is all mumbo jumbo, by the way. It's not commanded. You know, the wine, the, you know, egg, and the water, and this, and that, and the third, and the fifty other things, none of them are required. Not for us in the Torah. So, therefore, a lot of Christians who follow Jewish traditions, Ashkenazi Jewish traditions, also mumbo-jumbo, do not require it. 
So therefore, do not require agada. It's not been commanded to read any agada. That's a tradition. So you will find that 99% of what's done today in church and in synagogue, it's not in Torah. It's not even required. So therefore, though those things are never asked for. Wine is never asked for. Uh, water is never asked for with salt in it. Eggs are never asked for. And, uh, and the plethora of things. So you can have filler for your meals. You can have lamb, you can put mashed potatoes, whatever your culture is, you can add a filler. A filler could be many things. Water with salt is what some, some Christians do with Jews. Jews, they, the Ashkenazis, they put uh, water with salt and then they dip their egg into it. Totally, totally gumbo. It's nothing to do with Torah. Like I said, it's a tradition. So, I haven't got time to explain all the traditions. However, like I said, that what I've given you, what the Torah asks you, go to go to Exodus chapter 12. It's all written in. Only a few items that you require. You require a tortilla type bread with no leaven. Item one, little piece of lamb as a token. Item two, that you have to roast. Number three, you will not be eating leaven for the next seven days. You will not be eating any leaven-based products. One person made an error of eating, drinking beer. Beer has contains yeast, it contains leaven. So then he had to give an offering, a inadvertent sin, a transgression offering of a hundred dollars because you have to bring a lamb for inadvertent transgression offering, a, a goat. It's the, so in this day and age you'll have to bring a, a, a equivalent offering because the priest is Yahweh's he is Yahweh's spokesperson. He is Yahweh's voice. Where he is, that is where the altar is. So, remember that. You know, you're running off to Israel. Hey, let's go to Israel and let's go to Jerusalem. That's not where the priest is. priest is here in North America. Any priest who's in the gate, where he is, is Yahweh's presence. Yahweh's presence today, the God of Israel's presence today, is in North America. Not in Israel, not in, you know, East Africa and not somewhere else. Not in England even. It's over here. You could say technically in England, because I still have a, a residence there, but nevertheless it's here. Right now, in 2019, today, the presence is here in Ohio and Florida. You know, you, the priest is, where the priest residence is, that's where God's dwelling is. I don't, most of you haven't got that yet, because you're still searching for a priest in, in Tel Aviv and all over the place, all over the planet, when it's not even there. So, therefore, you have been instructed, and uh, just as Rabbi Kifa said, you come halfway, you get nothing. You're still, you're still hungry, you're still thirsty. To die for that, uh, Tom, for posting that to you. And this day shall be a memorial to you, and you shall keep it as a festival feast to Jehovah or Yahweh throughout your generations. You shall keep it as a feast by a law forever. You shall eat unleavened bread seven days. Even the first day you shall put away leaven out of your houses, for whoever eats unleavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that shall be cut off from Israel. To die for that. So yeah, so it is very important to follow those verses exactly and not make any mistakes. If you have, let's say if you have business as leaven, usually you have to come to the rabbi, come to the priest and he will give you a note and he will te temporarily take all the leaven off you on a note and you are technically selling it to him, then he will sell it back to you after the festival. So that's another technical procedure. I don't want to go into that because you're not dealing with leaven as a business. You don't own, you know, a, a, a bread factory and uh, you don't have to uh, worry about what am I going to do with all my bread. You know, I, I, you know, I have five million dollars of bread. That's when that happens, you know. So that's another complicated procedure. That's done when your leaven is such where you're doing a business and you cannot afford to just give that away. You have to then, we have to then utilize different techniques to deal with that. Seven days, uh, Exodus 12, 19. Seven days there shall be no leaven found in your houses. For whoever eats that which is leavened, even their soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel among the aliens and among the natives of land. You shall eat nothing leavened in all your dwelling places. You shall eat unleavened bread only. So, therefore, Therefore, uh, having said that, don't just uh, worry about just cleaning out your homes. Remember that the meal is supposed to be a family meal. You're supposed to sit down with your family. Like I said, you can add fillers, you can put grape juice if you like, orange juice. All of those things you can put on the table, but no leaven. 
So just just focus on give thanks. What you're supposed to do is you're supposed to give thanks to God. You're supposed to talk to your children or whoever is sitting on that table and remind everybody that why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? We are doing this as a memorial to the God of Israel. And we are doing this because God commanded us. And we are doing this because God delivered us. He gave us redemption. He delivered us from slavery. He brought us out. He did great miracles. He sent those plagues. So we talk about that in, on a table. We talk about those things, what happened. And people can ask questions. And you know, there should be at least a person who is knowledgeable enough to answer those questions. And therefore, therefore, after that, after that, after that, we will, we will continue to uh, give thanks, give praise, gratitude. Gratitude very important. Once we've done the gratitude, uh, Gabs, I don't know what you mean by where do you start, when, when do you start this? We do this on the Passover, on the, on the actual a twilight time. So let's say if the Passover is starting on uh, February, uh, sorry, April 20th. April 20th is when the most of the Ashkenazi, Sephardi, they'll be getting together and April 20th, around about the evening time, they will be, that'll be just before evening or just after the evening, they will have their meal. So they were done their leaven cleaning a couple of days before, on the 17th, they would have done all the cleanup of the leaven in the house and should be all gone by then. So, yes, many have different dates, but we, we do ours April 3. Uh, if you missed it, you can do the April uh, 19 one. So you still have time for that. Next, next year, keep to one date. Don't miss it. We publish our dates every year. Our date never changes. Never changes. April 3rd every year. Solar calendar. We do not follow or believe in any lunar calendars. They are not our calendars. They are made up calendars. So therefore, however, for sake of brevity, if you want to keep it on April 19th, that's okay. Because since you missed it. But on our one, on our one, if you missed it, you can do it on May 3rd. You can still do it May 3rd because you're allowed to do that. For, for whatever reasons you missed it. Sometimes it happens. A death. Uh, you know, you're away or, or something occurred, then you can still do it. Counting by the Enochs, absolutely right, prayer. we're counting by the Enochs. But we're doing it by solar calendar, by, e, by, by Enochs calendar, the dates never change. They're always the same. We publish our dates, we even have a calendar online that you can download. So therefore, look for the calendar and ask the by pages. Now let me, ca- let me come back. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, April 19th, count 8 days from April 19th, 8 days. And then 8 days, no 11. Then we, uh, let me come back to the testimony that uh, uh, one of the members posted. I think it's very important. And here's what the member said. There are three acts I remember. I execute that certainly direct to me, my current situation. So what is my current situation? As a French native born in a Caribbean island was catapulted to the USA, sharing now the American citizenship and more. I am happily married to my husband. I own a house and together we have a son. So what was the situation before that? Before, being single in the south of France, I used to be a regular cashier in a retail store. Although I had a driver's license, I had no car and really I did not need it. In France, buses, trains are very frequent, so why bother to have a car, right? The two places I went often was my workplace during the week and the church on Sunday. I was living and renting an apartment. Life was pretty decent. For sure, I did not know better. So what could have changed drastically my situation? From living in a decent country to a greater one, from a single status to a married one, from being a renter to becoming an owner, from taking buses and trains to possessing my own car, from being French citizen to American. I think gratitude and especially giving was the key to this change. And by the way, I truly appreciate my single life, and there is nothing wrong at that being single. But first, by going to church, I met an old lady, a widow. I do not remember how we got along, but the next thing I knew is that quite every Sunday afternoon, I was sitting in a living room, and while having some tea, we were both watching Texas Rangers, you know, with Chuck Norris. It was a favorite series, and I was kind of appreciating it too. We were chatting. At least I was listening a lot. I could spend my time differently with a reason to say she had family around, but I did not think that way. 
Second, my younger brother, who was living with my mother in the Caribbean, I welcomed him in my apartment in France so that he could start a new life. I did not uh, take him just because he was my brother, but especially because he was an orphan. At least this is the way I presented him to my Heavenly Father when I welcomed him in my apartment. And finally, while being in France, I had a long-distance relationship with my now husband. We were talking on the phone as friends at that time. We never met each other, but before we were introduced through a common friend, one day, as we were talking, he explained to me that he was involved in an accident and his car was completely destroyed, totaled basically. A friend of his was trying to help him with one of his cars temporarily, but he did take his car, he, he obviously took his car back, not giving him enough time to buy another car, so he was pretty stuck. He needed to go to work and he was taking care of his two sons by himself. The mother had passed away. Then I asked him how much money he would need to buy a car. He told me a certain amount in dollars that I have to convert in euros for me to know the exact amount. I sent him about 3,000 euros and if he needed more, he just had to let me know. Okay, so 3,000 euros for your information would be about $4,000. Finally, and remember this happened back about 10 years ago, $4,000 then or today is $15,000. Finally, he brought his car, as for me, this was not a loan, and I did not expect him to pay me back in any way. After six years, long distance relationship, we decided to meet, meet each other, so I planned my first trip to the US as my own birthday gift. I came to visit, and his friend was, this friend was my first tourist guide. It was in September 2009. I eventually came back again to the US in February 2010 for his birthday. As my return to France, he decided to marry me. We got married in May 2010 at my third trip to the US and I never returned back to France again. God blessed us with a son three years later and with a house. Of course, I finally got my own car for sure and this is not the end. More blessings are coming in my way to be continued. Never cease doing good. Baruch Hashem Yahweh and Baruch Hashem the Master Yehoshua. What a great testimony. But let me tell you something else that she didn't tell you. That, that, you know, this, 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 this lady, this woman is my personal student. I have known this woman for many, many, many years. <laughs> you know, I'll say at least 17 years, if, if not more. 17 years of studentship. This woman was the hand behind the translation of the Torah in French. This was the woman who did it for me. And I'm very grateful to her that today... If you have a French written Hidden Truths of Break Scrolls translation, it's because of her. And God blessed her tremendously for that. And listen to this. She, were, you know, she, she has access to Chuck Norris, you know, the Texas Ranger. So I was, telling, I was asking her, I said, you see him next time, can you ask him for my autograph as well? Because I'm his fan as well. <laughs> I was telling her that. <laughs> I said, to ask her for my fan, I, I've... I have the Enter the Dragon, you know, as my favorite movie, and I've followed every movie of Chuck Norris since then. So, great actor, great guy. Having said that, what is she pointing out? She's pointing out giving, charity, she's pointing out opening your hand. These are the things that I teach my students all the time. Be great, give gratitude to God. Give, give money to where, where it's needed, and God will bless you tremendously. But you, when, you, when you skimp and you save and you want to don't do this and then skimp and save comes to your home. Lack comes to your home. And you, when you show lack, lack comes to your home. This is why I was giving you opportunity to help this widow. This widow in the east, I said we need to raise $2,700. So far, I've raised about 1000 and above and I'm still about 1600 short. So I said, let's help this widow together. Let's get her on her, on her way and great blessings and rewards are in store for you. Those who you partner Great rewards are in store for you for that. And for you to know how to, to donate, you can go to our website forever-israel.com or wondering-israel.com. You can then go on to do, uh, PayPal donate and you can donate it and just put a comment in PayPal or send me an email and say this amount is for the widow. If you cannot do that because you don't have a card, a debit card or something or a credit card, you can then send a check to Rabbi Lamont Clophus, L-A-M-O-N-T-C-L-O-P-H-U-S, in the San Antonio, Texas address, 
that can be found on, on both of our websites, front page right at the bottom. Scroll down, the address is there. You can do it that way. So somebody asked me a question, is there a deadline? By the way, there is no deadline, but we do need to raise the money, hopefully in April, and you know, part, part, part ways, you know, send it, send it off. So having said that, it is very important to understand that when we stand for somebody who is desperate, who is in need, that is when God stands for us. You see, you, you all come to God and you say that uh, it's forever dash Israel, by the way. For, I've just given it www.forever, as spelt, dash little hyphen Israel.com. So we, we must remember that, you know, you're all coming to God at times you're saying, give me this, give me that, I need this. Sure, no problem. God is, you know, God is there for you. But what about when the widow is there? Who is there for the widow? When the widow says that I can't, you know, I haven't got food for my children. And the widow says that, you know, I don't have enough source of income. Who is there for the widow? This is why, you know, let's not be selfish about it. You know, let's be, at least be taking care of somebody else. And I, I, I had made a promise to that widow that I would take care of that need. And I will, you know, make sure that money is provided to her. Now, you can be part of that, uh, this blessing or you can be... You know, you can be out of this blessing. It's up to you. But this is how this is how things start. This is how infinite abundance starts when you open your hand and you say, "Hey, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna skimp and and, and I'm not gonna say, hey, 'Hey, I've got money.' Because people do that. When people don't want to give, they have 50 million excuses. Oh, I got this bill to pay. Oh, I got to do my car repair. Believe me, when you skimp and save, when you skimp from helping a widow." or a genuine, genuine, I'm not talking about a fake widow, genuine, genuine widow, or an orphan, genuine orphan, then God will skimp from you as well. You can come to God 50 million times, God will say, no, no, nothing for you over here. Because when you were called for, you didn't, you didn't help, and you coming to me called, the gate is shut. So this is how pe- people get gates shut in their face. And Rabbi Kifa gave you a simple example that you cannot come halfway and say, Hey, Kohi, knock, knock on the door and say, I've got this problem. Can you give me an answer and use me like a dictionary? Can you tell me what this is? Can you tell me what that is? Use me as a dictionary. But you don't do your due diligence. What is due diligence? Due diligence, you don't pay your tithe. You pop into the room. You, you, you hear some words and you disappear. No tithes, no zedaka, no charity to anybody, no donations, nothing. You don't do any of that. You think you can just you dial the Kohen and say, I- I've got this problem. Can you please help me? And, uh, you know, such and such person is having this, but I never hear from you. I never hear from you. I, you know, when I ask you that we need to support somebody, you don't do nothing. So that's dialing the Kohen, but you're not going to be recipient of the blessing. Why? Because it is, it is the, way you're, the way you're doing it. You are making yourself like that. Therefore, there's no blessing in it for you. Yes, you'll get one answer from me after that. You know, you're not going to get the heavens open up for you at all. They're just not going to open up for you. And let me tell you who the heavens opened up for. I'm, I'm going to give you a few names. Those people are in this room today. I'm not going to give you everybody's name. The list is way too long. Rabbi Kifa is the first recipient. First recipient of the heavens opening up for him. He is, he is today enjoying an incredibly loving, beautiful relationship with his wife and daughter. And he has a beautiful home in San Antonio. He has a beautiful life. And he said it to you many times. He is a recipient of that blessing, by the way, because he didn't just dial the Kohen. He is all the way in with the Kohen, number one. Second person I can tell you is Marie, the person who wrote the, the, email, you know, the person who sent me the testimony. Her name is Marie. She lives in Texas today. She is truly dialed in and fully in part of parcel of Israel. As the awesome tribes of Israel, she is benefiting every day with a beautiful relationship with her husband and a beautiful relationship with her children. Happy, happy woman. My goodness, I hear so many stories of broken homes, divorces, child support, killing people down, but yet I have beautiful stories to tell you. Beautiful stories of these people. I have Rabbi Zakaria in this room. Rabbi Zakaria must have been a student of mine, maybe, I don't know, maybe 18, 19 years, maybe, maybe if not more. He's been following me, he's been part and parcel, dialed into me completely, 
and I have been to his home more than once. The, not just Rabbi Zachariah, Texas rabbis in general, Rabbi Hoshia, Rabbi Buniah, and uh, other, other, you know, there's, a, there's another rabbi, Rabbi Hanania. These people are dialed in and fully in sync with Israel. And their lives are never the same since they have, since they have been with me. They have seen blessing upon blessing, change upon change in their lives. Why? Because they're not halfway house like a lot of the people. They don't just say, you know, they don't come once in a blue moon and say, Oh, I have this problem. How do I get rid of this? And then they disappear and they never tithe, they never give any donations towards the car which is used towards widows or orphans or towards the needy in some way. They don't do that. They are fully dialed in. Fully dialed in people, you will get full benefits from the God of Israel above. So people, you know, think, you know, this airy fairy concept of, well, let me just, you know, get some help and let me just do this. But this is what I'm saying, is that when you're fully dialed in, the Kohen in the gate is not here. I didn't come to America because one day I felt like coming to America and I came. It wasn't like that. I had a beautiful life in England. I have a home over there. I, have a, I had a car parked in my driveway. Mercedes, by the way, it was parked in my driveway when I left. And I, I, I sold, it, sold that car later. Having said that, God just told me one day that you got to go to America. Pack your bags and go. I left a $100,000 job. Think about this, what I did. I did the, uh, the ultimate sacrifice. I said, okay, I will go. $100,000 job. Three days later, I give, an into, I give a, a notice to my company. I was working for the top, one of the top law firms in England, in London. The top, not one of the top ten. It was the top law firm I was working for. And then I had to leave that company. And my, everybody was there asking me, Simon, why are you going? You got a beautiful job over here, good salary, bonus, everything. Why are you going? I said, God has called me abroad to go across the Atlantic. I have to leave. I have to go. I have to follow God. And so I did. So some of us that follow God, we don't do halfway house. Dial in and dial out. We don't do that. We're all the way committed. So having said that, that is the kind of commitment that is needed to be blessed. Now, uh, Adelia over here, Adelia is also dialed fully in with the God of Israel. Adelia found a beautiful husband abroad through myself and she is now in, you know, in, in sync with that man. She is talking to that man and uh, they are planning on you know, for him to come to the US and for them to do their nuptials in the US. These are some of the beautiful stories that I can tell you and there are many many more. Many, many more stories like this. So, I don't have stories to tell you of broken homes. I don't have stories to tell you of, of runaway kids or, you know, kids that are, 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 are upsetting their parents and uh, causing all sorts of havoc. I don't have those stories. Why? Because these people are dialed in to the God of Israel who is a power and a superpower and nothing comes before Him. And I say hallelujah to that. Wow, what a God we serve. What an amazing God we serve. And I can tell you the testimonies that I have are incredible. You know, incredible testimonies. Rabbi Benaya. Rabbi Benaya is not in the room today. Otherwise, he'd tell, he'd tell you. He has some great testimonies to tell. And he's always coming into this room and discussing his travels. He discusses his testimonies. Greatly, greatly blessed. Rabbi Benaya is in Texas side Dallas. I've been to his house as well. And I did say to Rabbi Zakaria one day, one day I went to his house, we conducted a seminar and I said, Rabbi Zakaria, great blessings are coming your way. So this is not just a, you know, uh, a fad, fad event. I said, since you opened up your home, great blessings are coming into your, into your life. Rabbi Zakaria has got a beautiful family life. He's a married man. He's, he's, he's living an a, 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 a infinite abundant life. He's happy. And he went from a, from a job change from a mechanic's job to a manager. Now he manages. He was like, Rabbi, he was saying to me one day, Kohen, you know, my back is hurting a little bit, lying on the car. I said, God will bring you another job. God will bring you great rewards. Don't worry about it. And you know what happened? He went from lying under the car to sitting in an office and ordering mechanics what to do. These are the kind of testimonies that I have of people's lives changing and higher salary, better salary. So, Think about it. Think about what you are getting into. We are talking about the awesome tribes of Israel. We are not talking about some fad and, you know, something that, hey, you know, do this and no. When you are dialed in fully to the Kohen in the gate, because 
the God of Israel brought Cohen in the gate to North America. North America today is the most powerful nation on this earth. North America was not was not fuel independent till I entered the shores of this country. And then it became fuel independent. It started selling fuel now. We have, we have a lot of fuel. We have a lot of gas today. North America propelled in many things since I come into this country. Everybody's, oh, let's run away from America. Let's do this. Let's do that. Let's go Africa. All this nonsense people talk about. But guess what happened when I came here? Since four years now, America has gone from strength to strength. The best stock market in ever ever happened in America. You know the Dow. You know the Dow. The SPX is running nearly at 2,900, and it's going to top 3,000. The SPX will top 3,000, by the way. Note to this. So this is what we see by the Kohen being brought to America. America has gone from abundance to abundance, strength to strength. Whilst you have all these you know naysayers. Uh, saying, hey, let's leave America, let's run off to Egypt, let's go to Africa, let's go live in Tel Aviv. all this nonsense that you are hearing, but God is not there. God is not there. So with that, I will leave you. I will love you and leave you. Have a great Shabbat and a great week ahead and enjoy your Sabbaths, enjoy your Passover as it's happening for most of us. And those of you who don't have the, the, the Passover yet, I, I, I wish you a great great Passover ahead. Enjoy your Passover, ditch the tradition, serve the Most High in the correct manner as He desires. He doesn't want you to do traditions. Yes, some traditions are good, I admit that, but they are not necessary. If you like them, great, do them, but they are not necessary for you being part of Israel. That's all I'm going to tell you. So with that, tada, thank you, thank you, thank you to the God of Israel and Shabbat Shalom, Shalom, Shalom.